Mankind's first true encounter with global warfare comes with World War I, but it is by no means the last. What follows is a century characterized by violence, mistrust, and injustice. The Paris Peace Conference is held at the end of the war on January 18, 1919, by the five victorious allies, the United States, Britain, France, Italy, and Japan. The Allies reassign national boundaries and draw up the Treaty of Versailles and various other treaties, imposing considerable war reparations upon Germany. The Germans find themselves humiliated as rising debt and the economic impact of the Great Depression leave their country in a state of hyperinflation, poverty, and mass unemployment. As national despair increases, the doors open wide to invite in a new government. By bleak economic conditions and an increasing nationalistic fervor, the Nazi party quickly rises to power throughout Germany. Using his charisma to appeal to the masses, party leader Adolf Hitler soon establishes a dictatorship and withdraws Germany from the League of Nations. International tension prevails in mainland Europe as Nazi-ruled Germany begins ignoring key demilitarization clauses of the 1919 treaties. Finally, the Germans invade Poland on September 1st, 1939, marking the beginning of World War II. The German forces advance through Poland with their blitzkrieg tactics and soon gain control of the entire country by the end of September. Within the next year, Hitler's troops seize the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, and France. Meanwhile, Italy and Japan begin their own military campaigns and form a pact with Nazi Germany. Together, their combined forces were known as the Axis. The ambitions of the Axis seem to be limitless. In June of 1940, Italy begins advancing into North Africa, fighting against British forces. Not long after that, the Germans begin a risky but ultimately unsuccessful invasion into the heart of the Soviet Union. And within the year, Japan launches a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, prompting the United States to finally enter the war on the side of the Allies. And now, in 1942, the Axis powers continue to grow in strength and number as the rest of the world trembles in fear. According to the latest SIS report, Rommel and the Africa Corps are planning a surprise attack. Behind these rocks is their dispatch unit. Our objective is to get in there and steal those battle plans. It's going to be a dangerous mission, so take cover out there and don't get yourselves killed. Right. Maya, Baxter and Clark on the left flank. Take out those machine guns and cover their escape route. We can't let them leave. Lancelot, Frost and Kyle, you'll all be with me. We'll take the right flank. Get your grenades ready, men. Take them down in one quick strike. Now, make sure you spread out and don't give them an easy target. We need to move at the same time, so everyone wait for my count. Ready? Three, two, one, attack! Oh, oh. 
You all right? Sergeant, the lieutenant's down! Lieutenant! Damn it, he's not gonna make it! Hold on, sir. We're going to get you some help. It's too late, he's dead. And so are we if we don't get out of here. Come on, let's go.
a matter of time before they see us. Jude, do you have any grenades? No, I'm all out, mate. Well, then I guess we're done for. Damn that intel unit. Think they could have mentioned they had a bloody tank? What now? It's aiming straight for us. Run! What the hell just happened? I can't believe we survived. Lie. Lie me. <coughs> hey, you all right? Talk to me! Come on! Dude, help me! Dude! It's not that bad, mate. You'll be fine. You got that? Damn it. He's going to die if I can't stop this bleeding. Major James Gallup, British Special Forces. What happened? He was shot by a bloody Nazi. Our platoon's wiped out. There's no one left to tend to him, sir. Jude, what's going on? I don't... I don't want to die. I don't... Don't let me die. Please, Major, we don't have much time. I'm begging you. You have to help him. Don't let him die. I'll see what I can do. Hey, Frank, pass me that field kit. What's his blood type? It's A, sir. Good. So am I. That'll make this a lot easier. Keith, grab the blood transfusion kit. Major, I don't know. Awfully risky. Jim, he's right. We have no choice. The Allies need as many healthy bodies as they can get out on the battlefield. We can't let him die. I understand, but... In the event his body rejects the transfusion, I'll take responsibility. <sighs> yes, Major. All right, let's get started. Frank, stop the bleeding. You two, hold his body down. Now this is gonna sting a bit, lad, but it'll save your life. <coughs> Major! Dad? Mum? Alicia? Well, look who's finally awake. All right then, mate. Jude, where... where am I? You're in a hospital in Cairo. You've been here ever since you went down on the battlefield. I remember getting hit, but after that, how long have I been out? 
five days. It's only been five days? How did I recover so quickly? Who brought me here anyway? You remember those lads who saved us? Well, they helped me carry you to the first aid tent before they went back to the front line. I see. He saved me. Gallant. Major Gallant of the British Special Forces. That's odd. I wasn't aware a squadron like that existed. Hmm. Maybe it's some sort of covert operations unit. But what would they be doing out here? You should count your lucky stars, mate. Even the doctor was amazed at how quickly you recovered from your injury. Really? Yeah, he said the gunshot wound you suffered starting to close up, and something like that usually takes three weeks to heal. That's good to hear. I must have had one hell of a surgeon. Right, well, you haven't fully recovered yet, so take it easy and get some rest. I'll be back tomorrow morning to see how you're doing. Hmm. Didn't know I was so healthy. I thought I was a goner out there. I received word from Cordelia that the soldier we saved didn't suffer any adverse reactions from the transfusion. It's great. But he isn't out of the woods just yet. I understand your apprehension, Keith, but he's going to be fine. His situation is no different than Lewis and Cynthia's. Well, we'll just have to wait until the period to find out. But either way, I think we should place those two under our supervision, Jim. I agree. In fact, I've already contacted Colonel Starling and requested an immediate transfer. They should be receiving their PCS orders in a couple of weeks. He won't show any immediate signs, but eventually his body will begin to change, so we'll need to inform him of what he can expect. Keith, take Cordelia with you and provide the lads an escort. Will do, Major. It's been two weeks since I was injured on the battlefield. I've since been released from hospital, and I'm now returning to SAS Regimental Headquarters. Headquarters is normally located in Hereford, about three hours by train from London. However, the entire SAS unit is currently stationed here in North Africa, so HQ has been temporarily relocated to Cairo. Upon arriving at headquarters, I'm immediately ordered to report to Colonel Starling, my commanding officer. Jude and I wait for him in his office. I can't understand why the Colonel would want to meet with a squaddy like me. In fact, I'm surprised he even remembered me. Maybe he's decided there's no point in keeping me around since I got injured in my first taste of battle. Maybe he's going to send me home. At ease, gentlemen. Yes, sir. As you know, we've had SAS units here in North Africa since the start of the war. We beat those Italians pretty bad, but when the Germans began sending reinforcements, we lost some ground. The situation here has been turning in our favor over the past few weeks, though. General Montgomery's operations have been largely successful, and I think we may push them back yet. You should be pleased to know that thanks to you and your unit's efforts, we've acquired advanced information on Rommel's counter-attack. Although it came at a great cost, your platoon suffered heavy losses, and I understand you yourself were near death when Major Gallant found you. Yes, sir. Now that you've been released from hospital, you would normally be returning to your unit. However, I received a special request from Major Gallant, and so as of today, the two of you have been reassigned to K Company. Sir? 
This is Lieutenant Miller and Lance Corporal Blake, K Company, 1st Platoon. They're here to escort you to your new unit. Good day, man. I'm Lieutenant Keith Miller. And I'm Lance Corporal Cordelia Blake. As Colonel Stalling has just explained, we'll both be joining K Company, 1st Platoon. A demotion? With all due respect, Lieutenant, why are we being removed from A Company? Why? So what kind of unit do you think we are, Corporal? My apologies, sir. I meant no disrespect. Just worried about joining a unit that has a woman in it. I still want to fight on the front lines. You listen here. Cordelia is an excellent soldier, and I would entrust her with my life on the battlefield. Easy, Lieutenant. Now, you lads don't know this, but K Company is part of our special forces. It's independent of our main unit, although it performs similar operations. Occasionally, though, K Company is assigned special missions on direct orders from the Prime Minister, such as the infiltration of enemy-held territory. So then, we'll be reporting directly to Prime Minister Churchill? That is correct. And for that reason, K Company's missions are demanding and greatly important. They require a team that consists of the most capable personnel. I don't know why James selected two green recruits such as yourselves. However, I expect you to live up to the reputation of the unit. Good luck, gentlemen. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll do, do our best to honor the SAS motto, Who Dares Wins. That's what I like to hear. All right, Lieutenant, they're all yours. See that they get to K Company safely. Oh, uh, and please tell James to drop by for a drink sometime. Yes, sir. Okay, you two, let's go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, lads, any questions we can answer for you? Can you tell us where you're taking us? To Tobruk. Tobruk? But I thought that was under enemy control. It is. As Colonel Stallings said, many of our missions entail infiltrating enemy territory. So during your first couple of months with the unit, you'll be trained in all matters of covert operations. Once you're finished with your training, you'll join the rest of K Company, 1st Platoon, or the Wolf Pack, as we like to be called. We're currently laying the groundwork for a counter-offensive. An infiltration operation in the middle of enemy territory. How in the world did we get chosen for this? That's a good question. You should ask our commanding officer. Major Gallant? Yes. Oh, and I should mention, he's been promoted to Lieutenant Colonel. Duly noted, sir.
Four months pass since Corporals Kyle and Lancelot joined the Wolf Pack after their initial encounter in Western Egypt, and the Allied forces have begun implementing a plan to reclaim North Africa. October 23rd marks the beginning of Britain's Operation Lightfoot. The campaign opens with the infantry of the 30th Corps breaking through Axis lines and clearing a route through the enemy's minefields. Five miles long, wide enough for the 10th Armored Division's tanks to pass through. While Erwin Rommel, commander of the Afrika Corps, seeks medical treatment in Germany, his replacement, Georg Stumer, dies unexpectedly of a heart attack on October 24th. The Allies attempt to take advantage of this fortuitous turn of events and continue their attacks despite resistance from the German 15th Panzer Division. As the fighting continues, British General Bernard Montgomery launches the next phase of the plan, Operation Supercharge, on the morning of November 2nd. Despite the Germans' strong attempts at a counterattack, Montgomery's efforts prove successful, and the Allies are able to break through the Axis lines. Rommel returns to North Africa, 
but it is too late for him to repel the Allied assault. With the loss of 400 vehicles, he orders his men to withdraw to Tunisia. On the 8th of November, the Allies implement Operation Torch and land behind the Africa Corps, cutting off their escape route. Meanwhile, the Wolf Pack, including its two newest members, is called to duty on an important mission. All right, listen up, everyone. We've been authorized to strike. Tomorrow morning, we'll infiltrate the German headquarters located outside Tobruk. Our mission is to capture and detain a prominent German individual. Who is it, sir? A physicist named Werner Futner. What's a German physicist doing on the front lines? According to SIS, Futner came to North Africa to visit his old friend Rommel. But he ran into our counter-offensive and has been left stranded outside Tobruk. And what's so important about this Futner that we'd run the risk of infiltrating enemy territory to capture him? Futner is reportedly involved with Germany's weapons program. We need to acquire as much information from him as possible about the new weapon he's working on. And what kind of weapon would that be? A new type of bomb that, if fully developed, would have the power to wipe out an entire city. An entire city? Is that even possible? It appears so, which is all the more reason we cannot fail this mission. We must do whatever it takes to capture Futner and learn what we can about this bomb. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Good. Now we'll be traveling by land. The operation will commence tomorrow morning at 0600. Pack your equipment and be back here in 15 minutes for briefing. All right. We're finally going back to the front. I can't wait to get another piece of those damn jerrys. Yeah, it's about time, mate. Let's make them pay for London. Hey, if you tickets are done chatting, then I suggest you get your gear packed. If you're not ready on time, we'll leave you both behind. Yes, sir. This is the village we'll be attacking. There's a German unit stationed here to look after Futner. We'll enter from the south and make our way to the building where he's residing. They'll be outfitted with tanks and armored vehicles, so be careful. And remember, we need Futner alive. Do not destroy the building he's in. Okay, back to your posts, everyone. Is everyone ready? All right, let's move out. Take down the tanks and the armored vehicles first. Aim for their sides. Thank <laughs> you. 
Stop charging ahead! In this unit, we cover each other's backs and advance with caution. Oh, my God. 
What is the meaning of this? Who are you people? Lieutenant Colonel Gallant, British Special Forces. Professor, we'd like you to share some information with us about the bomb you're developing for the Nazis. And what makes you think I'd share this information with you? I think my lieutenant here might be able to persuade you. Keith? Shooting an unarmed man, huh? I'm sorry. Your threats will not change my mind. And unfortunately, I have no choice. Fine. I'll tell you what you want to know, but only if I have your assurance that my life will be spared. And, uh, I want your word that my family and I can take refuge in Britain. If the Nazis were to find out about this, they would kill us all. Agreed. I'll advise the necessary authorities and personally guarantee the safety of you and your family. We'll make arrangements for safe passage and political asylum immediately. I can put it in writing, if you'd like. That will not be necessary, Lieutenant Colonel. I've heard much about British honor. I will take you at your word. Thank you, Professor. Keith, lower your weapon. Very well. Let me explain about the weapon we're producing. Are you familiar with the process of nuclear fission? Yes, it's a phenomenon that occurs when an element such as uranium absorbs neutrons and splits into smaller nuclei. Very good. In the 1930s, Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann discovered that splitting an atom releases neutrons and energy. A few hundred million electron volts of energy to be exact. This can cause another nucleus to split and release more neutrons and more energy, inducing a chain reaction. In other words, once the chain reaction begins, it produces an immense amount of energy, all within the blink of an eye. I see. And with a big enough chain reaction, you can destroy an entire region almost instantly. Precisely. My, your soldiers catch on fast. We were applying this process to make the most powerful weapon man has ever seen, the atomic bomb. The atomic bomb? It's an absolute secret, but we've been researching these bombs at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute and the Max Planck Institute, both in Berlin. 
Hitler calls it the Copenhagen Project, and we've been under strict military supervision. We developed a prototype of the bomb at a top-secret plant in Czechoslovakia last April, and the experiments we ran on it were quite successful. So, is the bomb ready for deployment? Oh no, not for a few more months. We're getting much closer, but the bomb is not yet ready for practical use. But I'm having reservations. A bomb of this magnitude, it could destroy a whole city. It could kill tens of thousands of people. It sends chills up my spine. But if we do not create this bomb, the Fatherland will not survive this war. I don't know what to do. I traveled here to seek the advice of an old friend. I thought he might be able to help me decide what's best. You're referring to Erwin Rommel, the Desert Fox. Yes. Yes, that's correct. I'm impressed. Your intelligence network is exceptional. Professor, I thank you for sharing this information with us. We'll escort you to our headquarters in Cairo, where our agents will have more questions for you. Lieutenant Colonel, what should a man do when faced with these choices? I'm no murderer, but I vowed to serve my country. Sometimes we don't know if we're making the right decision until we look back on it in hindsight. I can tell you, however, that by cooperating with us, you may be saving thousands of lives. We can only hope. Thank you. 
With the success of the North African campaign, the British 8th Division was able to seize Tobruk on November 13, 1943. By January 23rd, they controlled Tripoli in Libya. The Africa Corps manages to retreat to Tunisia and reorganize a defensive line at Meref, but they are unable to slow the Allied advance. It is only a matter of time before the German forces are completely driven out of Africa. After joining the resistance efforts in Africa for a few weeks, the Wolf Pack are ordered to return to Britain in February to receive new orders. Their next objective is Germany's northernmost research center, the Ryukin Deuterium plant in Norway. The destruction of this facility has been deemed imperative to halting Germany's production of an atomic bomb. Two more hours until the assault. I'm so cold. If we stay out here like this, we're going to freeze to death. Here, I brought you all some tea. This should help warm you up a bit. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Mind if I sit next to you? Uh, no. Not at all. So have you two gotten used to the unit by now? I know you lot aren't accustomed to seeing women on the front lines. I was a bit surprised at first, I'll confess. Now that I've seen you two in combat, I guess there's nothing wrong with it. If we weren't with the Lieutenant Colonel, they'd probably have us in the back doing logistics or some nonsense. That's the army for you. Yeah, so when did you join the Wolf Pack? A couple of years back. I'd been wounded kinda like you there. 
When Gallant saved me, he transferred me in. Before all this, I was a sniper in the Signal Corps. Injured and rescued by the Lieutenant Colonel. What a coincidence. So then, you've always been a sniper? Yeah, ever since my father used to take me hunting. I guess shooting was my only real talent as a kid. But shooting actual people... Somehow that's still new to me. Even if they're German soldiers who've killed innocent civilians? Now, now, it's a right shame you feel that way. German soldiers are human beings too, you know. Each one of them is someone's father, brother, or son. Human beings don't drop bombs on civilians. Those damn krauts can all go to hell for all I care. Oh, don't kid yourself. We're guilty of bombing and killing innocent civilians too. That's just the ugly reality of war. It's humanity at its worst. That's quite a cynical outlook you have there, Cynthia. Cynical, eh? When I was growing up in Ireland, I watched the British and the IRA fighting almost every day, before my very eyes. You cozy Londoners wouldn't understand. I'm sorry, I... I didn't know. Oh, that's all right, fella. I got a little carried away there. No worries. So why do you two hate Germans so much? Oh, well, I guess we all have our own reasons. Yeah. Quit messing around, you two. Stay on alert for the signal to attack. Ladies, it goes for you too. S Sorry, sir. You should know. The lads got their reasons for hating the Germans. Both of them lost their parents in the Blitz. And Jude also lost his younger sister. As for the other one, well... Jude's sister was his sweetheart. Oh, I see. Hmm. Reminds me of me younger days. They'll come off it eventually, but just let them alone until then. Maybe even give them some sympathy? If it's not too much to ask. Hey now, what do you take us for? Of course we'll show them some sympathy. <sighs> hey, do you two think they'll eventually hate me as well? Don't you worry, Nun. If they even look at you funny, I'll sort them right out. And, uh, Lieutenant, we'll start with that sympathy straight away, sir. Our mission is to destroy the enemy's deuterium plant, where they have been conducting nuclear testing. The road up ahead is the only access route to or from the facility. We will be moving alongside the road in the hills. Once we've engaged the enemy, we'll have to be quick about eliminating the guards and securing the area. The enemy has stationed a squadron of soldiers to guard the facility, so proceed with extreme caution. Good luck, team.
protect us, Lord.
Yeah. 
We've taken control of the plant, sir. Good. Let's enter the interior of the facility and place the... Wait a second. those things. Interesting. I wasn't aware the Germans possessed the technology to reanimate corpses. They must have discovered a way to control the souls of the dead. Control the souls of the dead? That's ridiculous. On the contrary, it's really not that uncommon at all. In the old days, they called it black magic. 
You see, the process of full resurrection requires many souls to perform, but restoring a dead body to life just temporarily really isn't that complicated. The physics behind it are quite rational, I assure you. It's just that it's all rather, well, inhumane. You're off your rocker, mate. That will be enough, Private East. Yes, sir. My apologies, Lieutenant Colonel. Here they come! already.
All right, place the explosives. Set the timer for each fuse at six minutes and stay alert, everyone. It seems they've begun to appear again. How do you want to handle them? Their involvement will change the entire complexion of the war. We're going to need Jack and the Professor. The Professor, I can understand, but Jack? I'm not so sure, Jim. You're taking quite a risk. I agree. We'll have to place a restraining device on him. And if worse comes to worst, we'll just have to take care of him ourselves. <sighs> I'm afraid this is going to turn out like that incident in the East End. You shouldn't worry so much, Frank. The explosives have been set, sir. Detonation in five minutes and counting. All right, everyone, let's move out. Head for the meeting point. Thank <laughs> you. 
With the destruction of the enemy's deuterium plant, the Wolf Pack returns to headquarters to await their next mission. Meanwhile, the war is tipping in the Allies' favor. In January of 1943, Soviet forces begin a counterattack to repel the Germans, and they succeed in reclaiming Stalingrad and Kharkov. The Americans and British achieve similar progress in North Africa and managed to drive the Axis out of Tunisia by May. Concentrating their attention on the east, German forces attempt to halt the Soviet advance, but their efforts are in vain. Hitler orders operations in the Soviet Union to cease. With the help of the American forces, the Allies land in Sicily and manage to force the Italians to surrender by early September 1943. However, German troops still occupy much of the nation and continue to fight the Allied forces. While the German forces seemed unstoppable just a few years ago, they now appear to be suffering great losses on all fronts. In November of 1943, United States President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, and Soviet General Secretary Joseph Stalin meet in Tehran to discuss the war. After discussing the situation in Europe, the Allied leaders agreed to launch a combined seaborne invasion of northern France in May of 1944, only six months away. By this time, the Allies are unable to gather any new intelligence on Germany's atomic weapons program, and it is believed they've abandoned their research. All sightings of reanimated corpses are deemed classified information, and the Wolf Pack members find themselves awaiting their next mission. My first day off in what seems like years, and I'm stuck here playing poker with the boys. How pathetic. Oh, quit your whinging. You know full well we can't go into town when we're on active duty. Yeah, you're right, mate. Say, I heard you haven't been sleeping much. You are right. Well, I went to see the medic, and he said I'm fit as a fiddle. Too fit, actually. But for some reason I can't sleep, and I don't have an appetite. Strange. Perhaps you're in love. Fancy Cordelia a bit, do you? Come on, fess up. What are you talking about? I don't fancy Cordelia. She just... reminds me of Alicia, is all. What? Listen, mate, you need to get over my sister. What? I understand how you feel. I miss her too, and for that I hate those bloody Germans as much as you do. But you have to let her go. She wouldn't have wanted you to stay single for the rest of your life. It's been two years now. You have to move on. But I... I understand. I know how much you cared for Alicia, but that doesn't mean you can't fancy another girl. Yeah, maybe. 
Oi, there you are. You boys free? We are, Lieutenant. What's going on? Well, I just got my hands on some whiskey and I thought you lads might care to join me for a drink. Sounds good, sir. Where are the others? The Lieutenant Colonel and Major Gaunt are at headquarters drawing up a plan of operations. Cordelia and Cynthia have gone shopping at a nearby village, and Herbert is immersing himself in some sort of bizarre research. So then, it's all for us? It appears so. Then what are we waiting for? Let's get started! Hey, what's wrong with you? Nothing, sir. Let's have that drink. Now you're talking, soldier. I just received a call from the medic, Jim. He's at our boys beginning to display symptoms. What, now? It's been over a year and a half. The period came and went and we didn't see any changes. True, his symptoms took much longer to appear than Cynthia's or Lewis's did. But they're exactly the same as theirs. I see. Well then, I believe the time has come for us to explain just exactly what our true objective is. Good morning, everyone. Let's begin the briefing. Our next mission will be to rescue one of our agents. Our man was looking for an escape route when he was arrested along the French border yesterday. He's now being held and interrogated by the Gestapo. We'll be descending approximately 20 kilometers outside of Paris and joining up with the resistance. Our point of attack is an interrogation facility located on the outskirts of the city. Once we penetrate the area, we'll split into two groups. Remember, lads, the quicker we can get to him, the better. I feel the coming of autumn on the winds. I must make haste to furrow the soil. Be sure that the hole is big. Big enough for a coffin. Oh, you're from the British forces. Thank goodness. I've been waiting for you. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Gallant, commanding officer. Are you the resistance liaison? Yes. My name is Leona. What can you tell us about the current situation? The security along the road leading to the building is quite lax, and there are very few soldiers stationed inside it. A public market is held every morning at a location nearby, so I'll take you there in a horse-drawn carriage. Excellent. Thank you for your help, Leona. You are quite welcome. This way, please. The interrogation facility is located in front of that park. Your agent was taken there two days ago and has been there ever since. I assume he's being interrogated and tortured. This is going to be dangerous, Leona. You should stay here. Thank you, sir. But I have been a member of the Resistance for over two years now. And do not forget, this is my country. <laughs> 
she has a point, Jude. Very well, lass, you can help us, but I want you to stay directly behind me, and if we get into trouble, you run. Understood? Yes, sir, Lieutenant Colonel. Frank, on my signal. Roger that.
Don't let the enemy come close! Bring out the armored vehicles!
Black magic forces. Looks like they're back. Be careful, everyone.
British soldiers coming all the way here just to die. <laughs> and what do you know? The resistance is here too. I am flattered. Who the hell are you? Oh, how rude. I apologize for not introducing myself. I am SS Sturmbannfuhrer Alexander Vlado, the one who will be sending you to hell. Well, just see about that, you smug son of a bitch. Careful, Keith. He reeks of the Blood Clan. The Blood Clan? What's that? And why does my blood begin to boil when I look at that guy? What the hell is going on? If you're a member of the Blood Clan, then what are you doing helping the Germans? Ho oh, ho! Very impressive. I didn't know there were humans aware of our existence. I see that you are no mere officer. I guess you could say I've been doing my research in the field. Hmm. You are most curious. Now, let's get down to business. I am interested to see how long you will last against my army of living dead. This is 
it. Never knew humans could be so powerful. I will not forget this until we meet again. Was that SS commander? And what about those zombies? And the Blood Clan? Sir, please tell me what's going on here. I intend to tell you and Jude all about it in due time. So what? We just have to keep on fighting those zombie soldiers? We don't stand a chance against them! We're going to end up dead! You're talking to a senior officer, Jude. Restrain yourself. I'm sorry, sir. It's just... Look, lad. I know you're confused, but don't lose hope. And don't accept defeat without a fight. Remember why we're doing this. It's not for our country, and it's not for justice. It's for the people we're protecting. I grant you it's not easy taking on these monsters, but we can defeat them. I'll elaborate on this later, but for now, that's all you need to know. <clears throat> yes, sir. We'll take you at your word, until you can tell us more, eh, mate? Yeah, I suppose. Sir, we secured the facility and rescued the agent. Here he is. Thank you for saving me, Lieutenant Connell. Looks like they roughed you up pretty good there, but I'm glad to see you're still alive. Pardon me for cutting to the chase, but I need to know what you've learned. Well, I have obtained two important pieces of information. The first is in regards to Germany's development of the atomic bomb. The project was supposed to have come to a standstill after the destruction of the deuterium plant last February, but they have continued on in secrecy. We've confirmed that the Germans have been acquiring deuterium from other sources. According to our agents in Berlin, they're close to achieving their end goal. So the Krauts haven't given up yet, eh? 
The second piece of information is a report of a German spy who has infiltrated the upper echelons of the Allied forces. What we know thus far is that he operates under the code name The Needle, and he's trying to retrieve information on the details of our planned invasion of France. Unbelievable! Where's he now? We don't know his exact location, but we do know that he's made his way to France to verify prospective landing spots. That's not good. Any interference with the invasion will prolong the war. We have to capture him. Indeed. Let's contact Lewis and inquire about the Needle's whereabouts. We'll head home for now and return to France again once we've regrouped. Leona? Yes, sir? We'll be contacting our agents to discern the whereabouts of the Needle. Please inform your senior officers that we'd appreciate their full support in this matter. Also, let them know that we'll return as soon as we determine his location. Yes, sir. I will let them know. Thank you, Leona. And good luck, lass. Leona, I want you to be careful out there. If you're ever in trouble, just run, okay? Thank you, sir. I will. And I'll be looking forward to the next time we meet. Au revoir. Hey, <laughs> hey, 
A month passes since the Wolf Pack's last offensive into France. As part of Winston Churchill's Operation Shingle, the Allied forces attempt an amphibious landing in Anzio, Italy, but they suffer heavy losses from a German counterattack as they attempt to move further inland. During this time, the Wolf Pack is stationed in Britain, awaiting their orders and gathering information for the Allied intelligence network. Meanwhile, Second Lieutenant Colonel Louis Canton, a Wolf Pack agent who's been working closely with the Resistance, has been tracking the Needle's movements for weeks. On February 13, 1944, the Wolf Pack receives a telegram from Lewis with urgent information regarding the Needle. Allied intelligence has discovered the Needle's location. Lewis's telegram informs them he was last seen hiding out in a hotel near Le Havre in northwestern France. Upon receiving this update, the Wolf Pack immediately leaves for Portsmouth to depart for France that same night. Are you all right? Huh? Oh, hi Cordelia. Sorry, I didn't hear you there. That's all right. What were you thinking about? The war. The Germans. I mean, they're resurrecting the dead. Making a bomb that can turn a city into ashes. What's next? They'll do anything to win. Not all Germans are evil, you know. Hitler and his lot might be. But there are good Germans, too. You shouldn't forget that. Good Germans? Hitler may be the one giving the orders, but who are the ones carrying them out? It's the good Germans killing people, not Hitler. I know what you're trying to say, but not all Germans are like that. Some of them are against the war. How would you know? I know because... my father was German. What? My family lived in Berlin before the war. Wait, so that means you're German? Well, half German and half British. My mother met my father when she was studying in Germany. They got married and settled down there. After I was born, they found out I had a special gift. I considered it a curse, but my parents loved me all the same. They were kind people, both of them. A special gift, huh? That's... wait a second, how did you end up in Britain? My father worked in a military research institute, but he was very vocal about his opposition to the war. One day, some men in black came to our house and took him away. He came home two weeks later, in a casket. The officers said he took his own life, but my mother and I knew the truth. They had tortured him to death. It wasn't long before the Gestapo began to take an interest in me. They had somehow learned about my abilities. My mother and I knew we had to leave Germany and move to Britain. We managed to slip past our surveillance and find our way into France, but... As we were about to cross the Strait of Dover, they caught up to us and killed my mother. They captured me, but while they were bringing me back to Germany, Lieutenant Colonel Gallant and the Wolf Pack rescued me They've been my family for the past five years now. Cordelia, I had no idea. But after all that, how can you defend the Germans? They murdered your parents! No! 
the Nazis murdered them. But not all Germans are Nazis. Don't you get it? There are a lot of Germans who are against the war. When my mother and I were fleeing, the only reason we made it out of the country was because kind Germans fed us, sheltered us, and helped us hide. Well, maybe it's different because you lived there. I mean, you may be right. But after my parents and Alicia, I just can't forgive them. I can't forget what happened. My father was a German, and he wasn't a Nazi. And you don't see me fighting for them, do you? I don't kill innocent people. I'm not a murderer. Please, you can't hate an entire country. How do you expect me not to? They killed the ones I loved. I can still hear them, Cordelia. I can still hear them scream. <sighs> I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to... I'm sorry. As you know, team, our mission is to capture the Needle. Our intelligence agents have been working with the Resistance, and together they've managed to locate his whereabouts. For the past few weeks, he's been scouting the coastal area between Normandy and Calais. At present, he's hiding in a hotel near Le Havre. Our sources say most of the German garrison stationed there was reassigned to Paris last week. So defences will be light, but we shouldn't let our guard down. Zero hour is at 0530 February 14th. Get yourselves ready. We'll begin moving ashore in one hour. Welcome. I am Agent Gilbert, leader of the Resistance in this region. 
Lieutenant Colonel Gallant, British Special Forces. The Needle hasn't left his room in days. My men have been keeping a close watch on him. Lead us to him, Agent Gilbert. Looks like we walked right into a trap. Well, well. What do we have here? We've been expecting you, my friends. You haven't come all this way to capture the Needle, have you? You're that officer from the Gestapo headquarters. I may have underestimated you before, but this time, you won't be so lucky. You're trapped here. Don't worry, we won't be the ones needing an escape route. <laughs> How amusing. But there are only ten of you against my entire battalion and armored vehicles. You don't stand a chance. Your overconfidence will be your undoing. You saw what we did to your units the last time. How disappointing. I was hoping to hear some bacon this morning. But instead, you seem to be in a hurry to die. Spread out! Oh, 
Sorry I'm late, sir. You blokes start without me? Who's that? Is he on our side? That's Second Lieutenant Colonel Lewis Canton. He's been leading our counterintelligence network. Lewis, get on their flank! Right. Damn it! Shoot that rat down!
gate. I lose to these wretches again! Ghost Warriors, attack! I congratulate you for your efforts today, my friends. But don't confuse this with true victory. You're still far from safe. Take this, you bastard! You're wasting your time, humans. <laughs> Your 
puny weapons will not hurt me. Good is dead. Huh? What's happening to me? My body's burning up again. We're out of options, Jim. He's Blood Clan. I know, Frank. I guess this is it. What do you mean? Are we just giving up, sir? Stand back, lads. I'll take it from here. Cordelia, cover me. Yes, sir. I guess the old-timer wants to be next. Enjoy your last breath, monster. Today you die. What? You're a werewolf? going on? Bloody hell! Take a close look. Now you know why our little unit's such a secret. Every one of us in the wolf pack has a special ability, and is nothing you should be scared of. Jim was waiting for the right opportunity to tell you all this. I... I don't believe this is happening. This can't be. You may be strong, bloodsucker, but you're no match for me. Cordelia! Thank you. 
Bet you lads weren't expecting to see that today, now were you? Are you still Lieutenant Colonel Gallant? Yeah, it's me. I'm impressed. I thought you'd be terrified. Sir, you're... I mean... Are you human? No, I'm a werewolf. Keith and I are from the Fang Clan in Scotland. This can't be real. We're very real, Corporal, and we're a lot older than you think, by at least a few hundred years. Keith and I have been fighting the Blood Clan for centuries now. What? Is everyone here a werewolf? Or is it just you and Lieutenant Miller? Frank's not, but he has other powers. Our little Cordelia here is a fire starter, and Herbert is a reanimator. The wolf pack was specially formed to counter enemies that are beyond human. Only Churchill and a few other top officials are aware of our unit. Then why were Jude and I assigned to your team? There's nothing special about us. 
Not true. You don't have all your powers yet, but they'll be appearing soon. I saw you get that adrenaline rush in battle. Wait a second. It's all because of that blood transfusion, isn't it? I'm sorry, lad. Our blood contains a catalyst that gradually transforms human tissue. Your body will be undergoing some changes. You already have superhuman strength, and as time goes on, you'll acquire other abilities as well. That's why I had you and Jude transferred to our unit. This can't be real! Please tell me I'm not becoming a werewolf! Why'd you think Gallon transferred you to the unit, mate? Don't worry, Cynthia and I went through the same thing. It takes a bit getting used to, but you'll be fine. I'm not human anymore. I'm a monster. Don't say that. Cordelia, I... Lieutenant Colonel Gallant, Lieutenant Miller, Major Gaunt. You think they're all monsters, do you? Well, what about me and Cynthia, then? Yes, we're different from regular humans. We have powers they don't. But that doesn't make us monsters. We can use those powers to make a difference in this war. I'm sorry, I just... If you lads want to leave, I can arrange it. I won't force you to stay. I only brought you along so you'd understand the changes your body's going through. Sir, I'm grateful you saved my life. Really, I am. But I think I need some time to decide what I want to do. I should talk things over with Jude, too. That will be fine. Take a leave of absence and think it over. This is a decision you will need to reach on your own, though. No one can make it for you. Right, well, I'm off too. Something tells me the Needle won't be waiting for us in that hotel room of his when we get there. Very well. Good luck to you both, then.
made up your mind yet? We've been on leave for three months now. I'm not going back, Jude. But we made a promise during the Blitz. We said we'd get back at the bloody Krauts and do our part to end this war. Don't you remember? That's easy for you to say. You're still a human being. Look at me. I'm a beast. All right, mate, if that's what you've decided. I know I don't have any special powers myself, but I'm going to continue fighting with the wolf pack. Yes? It's me, Lieutenant Miller. I'm coming in. I just spoke with Jude, and he told me about your decision. You really don't want to come back? Not even to say goodbye to Cordelia? Sir, I really appreciate everything you and the Wolf Pack have done for me. But how can I lead a normal life with this... this... C 
curse. I'm sorry, then. It's not your fault, sir. You don't need to apologize. I'm sorry that we're losing such a fine member. We could use all the able bodies we can get right now. I guess we all have our own paths in life. I just... I just don't know anymore. As the Lieutenant Colonel said, only you can make this decision. But running from your problems isn't going to solve anything. You call your powers a curse. Well, Gallant did what he did to save your life. If you'd rather be dead than cursed, at least make your death count for something. Life's become so complicated since the war started. I wish I knew what to do. Mom, Dad, Alicia, help me! So, you're leaving for good. You sure you aren't coming back? Yeah, I'm sure. Sorry, mate. It won't be the same without you. Since we were kids, you've always been there to keep me in line. Never thought what life would be like without the war. We'd be living happily somewhere. You, me. Alicia, sometimes life just doesn't turn out the way you expected it would. Jude. Hey, that just means there's more crowds for me, right? Take care, mate. Be sure to write once you're sorted. I will. And don't go dying on me out there. Don't worry, we're going to get the needle this time. Before you know it, we'll be kicking Hitler's bloody ass and putting an end to this damn war. All right, I need to get going. It's almost time to report to headquarters. German, and he wasn't a Nazi. And you don't see me fighting for them, do you? I don't kill innocent people. I'm not a murderer. So, did you hear about that special operations unit? They're sending them into France to prepare for the invasion. They're gonna drop them right into German territory. Can you believe that? Really? Behind enemy lines? Huh. That's rough. It's like being given a death sentence or something. I'd say be real lucky if one of them came back alive. What do you think? No kidding. The guys taking part in those suicide missions, they're either very brave or very stupid. Look, lad. I know you're confused, but don't lose hope. And don't accept defeat without a fight. Remember why we're doing this. It's not for our country, and it's not for justice. It's for the people we're protecting. Don't worry, we're going to get the needle this time. Before you know it, we'll be kicking Hitler's bloody ass and putting an end to this damn war. Jude. Cordelia. What? What the hell am I doing?!
Come in. Lieutenant Colonel, sir, I've changed my mind. If it's not too late, I'd like to return to the wolf pack. If you'll have me, that is. Our missions will only be getting tougher from now on, lad, and I can't have you endangering the lives of my men and women. This is your last chance to turn back. Are you sure about this? I am, sir. I'd forgotten the SAS motto, who dares wins, but I see now what's important. It's not about me. It's not about killing the Germans. It's about protecting people. Very well then, Corporal. Get your gear and return to the unit. You have one hour until we begin briefing for our missions in France. Yes, sir. Our target is a small town near Calais. Lewis and the SIS have tracked the needle to the home of a Nazi sympathizer located on the outskirts of town. After we've dropped into France, we'll have to travel five kilometers on foot. When we reach the town, we'll locate the house and secure the premises. From this point forward, we will be issued holy silver bullets. They'll be more effective against the Blood Clan. That is all. Be ready to leave in 20 minutes. That's the house up ahead, and those are the soldiers guarding it. What do you want to do, Jim? We can't squander this opportunity to capture the needle. Let's storm the compound, get what we came for, and pull out quickly.
British forces incoming! Call for reinforcements! Oh, 
Street and fire anti tank grenades at its sights. Oh, my God. 
Don't shoot! Don't shoot! I surrender. Are you the needle? Yeah. I'm impressed. You worked your way deep into German-occupied territory. You must be that British Special Forces unit I keep hearing about. And you're the spy we've been tracking. Tell me what you know about the Allied Forces' invasion plans. I've narrowed it down to late May or early June, somewhere along the coastal region between Normandy and Calais. Sound about right. Impressive. You've done your job well. Thank you. But it doesn't matter whether or not I'm captured. The Third Reich cannot be stopped. My countrymen will crush your feeble attempts at an invasion. Such confidence. But without the exact date and location, I don't see how they'll be able to stop a massive invasion they aren't prepared for. Your opinion will change in time, girl. Oh, well, it looks like I can relax in a POW camp until the war is over. Shall we be going then? What is this Sturmbahn Führer doing? He's recovering, Herr General. But we can't allow the British to get away with humiliating us and injuring the Sturmbahn Führer. I agree. 
I am putting Alexander's unit under your command for now. You shall assume the prime responsibility of disrupting the enemy's seaborne invasion. I should also like some of your men to assist me suppress the Allied sympathizers here in Berlin. As you command, sir. When I head to France, I will leave behind some of my most trusted men. Please use them as you see fit. Excellent. Good luck.
The Allies' invasion cannot be far off now. Soon these beaches will be under attack. The first 24 hours will determine the outcome of the war and the fate of our country. It will be a very long day for both sides. God have mercy on us all. threat of the D-Day invasion plans leaking into the wrong hands has passed. The Allied forces are gathering in the south of England, three million troops and over two million tons of supplies, all awaiting the order to deploy. General Eisenhower, Supreme Commander of the Allied forces, has assumed command of the invasion. The date is initially set for June 5th, but after reports of bad weather, he pushes it back to the 6th. At 21.45, on the night of June 5th, Operation Overlord commences. Over 6,000 cargo ships, frigates, and destroyers filled with troops and vehicles are deployed across the Strait of Dover. Before the sea craft are scheduled to disembark across the channel, orders are given for paratroopers to land behind enemy lines in Normandy. Each unit is given specific instructions to secure tactical beachhead and destroy key German defenses. The Wolf Pack has been assigned to assist the British 6th Airborne Division in their tasks, and the Lieutenant Colonel's unit is transported to the northern tip of Normandy by air. Hey guys, to the war room straight away. The Lieutenant Colonel is going to brief us on the invasion. You serious? It's finally starting. The time has come, lads. That's right. We leave tonight for France near La Villette with the British 6th Airborne Division. Our mission is to secure a landing area and suppress the enemy. The German 21st Panzer Division might be present, but their location is unclear. We'll strafe the entire area while the 6th Airborne secures vital bridges nearby. If we have contact with enemy forces, we're instructed to neutralize them quickly and quietly. We leave tonight at 23.20. Dismissed. It looks like we've drifted away from our drop zone quite a bit. We need to... Hmm. We've been spotted. Tanks are heading this way.
British soldiers ahead, men! Return fire! <laughs> Oh. <laughs> 
How exciting. I was worried my men wouldn't see any action. Another Blood Clan officer? I know that voice. Well, well, well. If it isn't the Fire Witch. Go to hell! Cordelia! That's Carmilla. She's the one who killed my mother. Do you think she's with that Alexander guy? <laughs> So you're the unit that wounded my master. I should have known the witch would turn traitor. Traitor? You wanted me to use my powers to kill innocent people. I fled Germany to get away from you monsters. You can chirp all you want, little bird. But the fact is, you're a disgrace to your people. That's enough, Bloodsucker. I'm gonna send you to the same place as your beloved commander. My, my. You wolves have such large mouths. I'm going to slice up those tongues of yours and feed them to the pigs. Attack! Oh, my God. 
I lost! 
Next time we meet, I'll personally tell you all limb from limb. She's no pushover, and she made it sound like Alexander is still alive. Things aren't going to get any easier on us. I may have to call up our reserve forces for active duty. One problem after another, eh, Jim? This is what war is all about. All right, lads, gather round. We still need to link up with the 6th Airborne Division. Let's move out. On June 6, 1944, the Allied forces split their numbers into five divisions and land at various strategic beachfronts between the Cotentin Peninsula and Wistola. Fighting begins at 016 hours with the British 6th Airborne Division. The 6th Airborne has been given the tasks of securing bridges over the Orne River and the Conn Canal and destroying the enemy's Merville gun battery overlooking Sword Beach. In an attempt to prevent the Germans from receiving supplies and reinforcements, the U.S. 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions parachute inland to the west and secure vital roadways and bridges. By 0630 hours, the U.S. 4th Infantry Division is able to land on Utah Beach, the westernmost beach of Normandy, with the 8th Regiment being the first Allied unit to actually set foot on the beaches by sea. By 1000 hours, the U.S. 1st and 29th Infantry Divisions have secured Omaha, at the cost of almost 3,000 American lives. Meanwhile, British and Canadian forces land on the Central Gold Beach and the Eastern Juneau and Sword Beaches, where they are joined by the airborne divisions which landed earlier. Although suffering a total of nearly 9,000 wounded or dead, the Allied forces are successfully able to land 156,000 troops within the first day of the invasion. The longest day of the European front has ended. With the remaining forces following over the next few days, Operation Overlord is a success.
During late June of 1944, the German forces continue their counterattacks on the Allies' locations. After encountering heavy fire, the British forces landing at Sword Beach find themselves unable to advance past Caen, which would remain under German occupation until August 8th. During this time, the Wolf Pack are assigned on various reconnaissance missions away from the front. Meanwhile, the Allied intelligence network is working diligently but its agents have uncovered no new information on German atomic weaponry or on the relationship between the Blood Clan and the Nazis. The Fuhrer is disappointed with your failure in France, and he is not pleased the Allied invasion was successful. I apologize, Herr General. Our forces could not stand against their three million troops. If they advance, we may need to summon our blood subjects. 
Your blood subjects? Hmm. We'll see. In the meantime, you are to remain here in Berlin and help my subordinates suppress the Allied sympathizers. Jawohl, sir. These monsters. Now she wants to call up their blood subjects. What next? We've been running reconnaissance ever since we landed here. I thought we were going after Hitler. We're here to eliminate the Blood Clan. Until we receive more intelligence on their next move, our orders are to support other divisions. I understand that, but we could at least be on the front lines. I hear our armor division at Kars in a stalemate. I bet we'd see some action out there. Calm down, mate. I know it's tedious, but they give us these missions for a reason. Everyone, get your gear ready and prepare to move out. We're heading deeper into France. Here we go again. More reconnaissance, I bet. Listen up. We will deploy near the town of villers bocage The enemy is spread throughout the area, and our mission is to assess their numbers. We know there is at least one armored division active, so bring your anti-tank weapons. We'll enter from the northwest. As we encounter enemy forces, engage them, but do not pursue. Remember our objective. That is all. Make your final preparations and reassemble back here in 10 minutes. There's no sign of the enemy, or civilians. This place is deserted. I heard a division of four German tanks destroyed 28 of our vehicles here a few days ago. The civilians must have fled the city during the battle. I heard that report too. The German division was led by a tank with the numbers 231 on the side. He must be exceptional. He may not be blood clan. And he may not have any special powers, but we can't let our guards down. Incoming! Look! 231! That must be the tank commander! Quick! Take cover and prepare for anti-tank combat.
Commander, I was sent by Rice Fuhr Himmler to assist you. Thank you, soldier. Ghost warriors, rise and attack! Look alive, soldiers. Here come those ghost warriors again. What are those things? Are they moving corpses? Yes, Commander. Created by the Fuhr himself. Now, fire at the enemy while my men attack them. I refuse to do that. What? Are you disobeying a direct order? I refuse to use such cowardly tactics. You should feel ashamed for defiling the corpses of your countrymen. You should know this loyalty to the Fuhr comes with a price, Commander. This is disgraceful. Tank driver! They're pulling out of here! Huh? The tank's leaving? Damn it! I'll deal with those traitors later. Men, take care of the enemy!
This isn't good. We're gonna run out of ammo at this rate. What? What was that? Jack, we've been waiting for you. Take care of those troops in front. They're all yours. Gladly, Lord. I'll introduce him to my blades.
SS Obersturmführer Michael Wittmann, commander of the 101st SS Panzer Battalion. I didn't know our forces would resort to such ignoble tactics. I apologize for their cowardice. Lieutenant Colonel James Gallant, British Special Forces. Commander Wittmann, were you not aware of some of your countrymen's most recent military policies? I was not. I'm a proud German soldier. And we Germans believe in a fair fight. I will not resort to defiling the corpses of my comrades to win a battle. You're an honorable man. I propose we move along then, shall we? As honorable men, I doubt either of us would even consider firing at the other from behind. Agreed, Commander. Auf Wiedersehen. Well, I guess not all Germans are ruthless murderers. Right. Thank you. 
What are the results of your surveillance operations? We cannot allow the resistance to interfere, especially at this crucial stage in the war. We are having difficulty gaining intelligence on their movements, sir. The Allied sympathizers here in Berlin are being quite cautious. No more excuses. The mission I assigned you is an urgent matter, and I am expecting results before Sturmbannfuhrer Vlado returns. Understood? Yes, Herr General. I cannot stand taking orders from a human. However, that can wait. I have a lead on what the Resistance is plotting. I just need to make certain they succeed in their plans. I've called you all here on such short notice because we've been assigned an urgent mission. What does it entail, sir? We will be assisting with the assassination of Adolf Hitler. But, sir, is that even possible? Yes. British intelligence tells us that it is some of Hitler's own officers who are planning to assassinate the Fuhrer and make peace with the Allies. They'll be carrying out their plans on the 20th of this month in Eastern Prussia. This has been confirmed by resistance agents in Germany. Let me guess, the higher-ups want us there in case the attempt fails, hmm? We'll be disguising ourselves as German civilians and heading to Wolfschanze. And yes, our mission is to finish the job if the initial attempt fails. This could be the decisive moment that puts an end to the war. But I can't guarantee we'll all come back home alive. So if you want to back out, now is the time. No disrespect, sir, but who'd want to miss the chance to assassinate Hitler? Right, team? That's right. right. Sounds like it's unanimous, then. Excellent. Then get your gear together. Briefing begins in one hour, and we ship out immediately after. Our target is Wolfschanze, located five kilometers east of Rastenburg, in a densely wooded area. The compound will undoubtedly have a heavy security presence. The assassination is planned to take place during a strategy meeting in Hitler's bunker on July 20th. Our unit will hide in the woods to the northwest and wait. Intelligence says the assassin, Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg, will be using an explosive device hidden in a suitcase. If Stauffenberg fails, we'll finish the job by sniper. 
We have also been ordered to rush in and retrieve the corpse if possible. That is all. We're going to be in the middle of enemy territory, so don't go light when packing your ammunition. How does it look? Anything? A few minutes ago, an officer entered the bunker, carrying a suitcase. I'm assuming that's Colonel Stoffenberg, the assassin. Shouldn't be long. Any moment now. There's the blast. Did it get him? Sir, Stoffenberg just got into a car. I'm not concerned about him. I want confirmation on Hitler. Did it get him? There's too much smoke and too many people running around. I'm... Wait, there he is! The attempt was unsuccessful, sir. Hitler is still alive! I thought this might happen. Damn. Next time you have him in your scope, I want you to shoot. Yes, sir. just happened. It's like he bent the air around him. We're under attack! They're in the woods! Snipers! They've spotted us. There's too many of them. We need to fall back! Everyone, take cover!
No use! Everyone retreat, quickly!
Hey, hey, hey. 
On July 25, 1944, Allied forces initiate Operation Cobra, a strategic push out of Normandy towards southern France, devised by United States Army General Omar Bradley. If successful, this advance would allow the Allies to encircle the German 7th Army and 5th Panzer Army. Within a month, on August 20, 1944, the Allies managed to surround 60,000 German troops near Falaise and proceed to open fire on them with their artillery. The ensuing battle claims over 10,000 German lives before they can retreat. As a result of the intense violence, the entire area earns the nickname the Corridor of Death. Gallant said something earlier about calling in the Wolf Pack's reserves. Do you have any idea what that means? Well, there's Jack, of course. I don't know much about the others, except that there's a Master Swordsman. I heard the Swordsman goes way back with Lieutenant Colonel Gallant, Major Gaunt, and Lieutenant Miller. He must be a seasoned war veteran. I bet he has a lot of special powers. Hey, the Lieutenant Colonel wants everyone in the briefing room straight away. We have new orders. We are headed to Falaise. The Germans lost over 10,000 troops in an ambush, but they're still fighting back. Intelligence reports a Blood Clan division is present. We'll wait at their retreat point and annihilate the Blood Clan as they try to escape. I expect we'll encounter armored vehicles, so pack your anti-tank weapons. This Blood Clan division might be small, but don't let your guard down. If we stick together and support each other, we should be able to crush them. Don't move yet. We're in an open field. Those tanks have the advantage. Yes, sir. There they are. Those are Blood Clan soldiers. Close in on them.
Oh, my God. 
Quickly, go round the side and take it down before they surround us.
A worthless unit of humans will never defeat us! Blood subjects, attack! What are those? Skeletons? Blood subjects, summoned from the underworld by the Blood Clan's dark magic. Bullets can pass right through the holes in their bodies. We'll need to get in close to kill them. Oh. 
Running out of ammo, Jim. I don't know how much longer we'll be able to hold out. You have no right to walk among the living again. Allow me to help you return to the abyss from which you came. that? That's Professor Elisa Van Helsing, one of our reserves. A professor, huh? Straight from King's College. Her grandfather used to be with the unit, but as you can see, she's taken over his duties now as a vampire hunter. Lieutenant Colonel Gallant, Elisa Van Helsing, reporting for active duty. Nice to see you again, lass. Now, don't get too carried away out there.
With the Americans and French attacking from the south, the British from the west, and the Canadians and Poles from the north, the battle at Falaise results in nearly 50,000 German troops captured and 10,000 more dead or wounded. The total casualties for the Allies are roughly half that. After their success at Falaise, Eisenhower orders the Allied forces to continue advancing on the German border and bypass the city of Paris. General Charles de Gaulle, leader of the French Liberation Army, urges the Allies to liberate Paris first before invading Germany, but Eisenhower fears incurring heavy losses from urban warfare. Fearing the loss of Paris to the Allies, Hitler has instructed General Dietrich von Holtitz, commander of the German occupying forces, to burn the city to the ground if the Allies are ever about to reclaim it. It is known as the Scorched Earth Policy. As the Germans place bombs across the city, Parisians begin to arm themselves and rise up against the German garrison. Hearing of these developments, General de Gaulle orders General Philippe Leclerc and the Free French 2nd Armored Division to advance on Paris. Now, with the addition of Elisa van Helsing, the Wolf Pack is given orders to capture General von Kultitz before he can carry out Hitler's scorched earth policy on the city. They set out on their new mission at the end of August hoping to reach Paris just a few days before the rest of the Allied forces. My, it feels good to be in combat again. Elisa Van Helsing reporting for duty, sir. I have information from Lewis that the Blood Clan have been seen mobilizing in Belgium and the Netherlands. They may be planning another push into France. And sir, if I may speak, I thought that you and my grandfather destroyed the last of the Blood Clan decades ago. How are they still alive? Your grandfather, Frank, Keith and I killed the Count and his subject at their hideout in Transylvania back in 1885, over a half century ago. We don't know how some of them survived. For that matter, we don't know what their objectives are or even why they're helping the Germans. But what we do know is, the Blood Clan appears to be getting stronger and stronger, and we need to stop them before they start attacking entire cities with their magic. We'll be needing more manpower then, won't we, sir? Will Lewis be joining us? Yes, I've already made arrangements for him to join us more permanently, just as soon as he's finished establishing his spy network. In the report I acquired from him on my way here, he said his operations were nearly complete. We should expect him presently, I imagine. Our campaign will begin in Dreux, located on the outskirts of Paris. After we rendezvous with resistance agents, we'll secure a safe route into the city itself. We anticipate any German troops stationed in the area will have moved to Paris to fight the uprising, so we don't expect to find much opposition awaiting us there. However, intelligence suggests that more Blood Clan units are en route to Paris from Berlin, so keep your guard up. We leave in 10 minutes. Dismissed.
Be on full alert, team. We're approaching the meeting point with our resistance liaison. Ah! Leona, it's you! Oh, my! How is everyone? I did not know you would be the unit I was escorting into the city. Looks like we'll have you as our guide once again, lass. But please, keep your voice down. We don't want to attract too much attention. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's just, it's so good to see everyone again. How's the situation in Paris, Leona? A lot of civilians have been wounded in the skirmishes so far, but the outcome looks favorable. I think you should know. I saw that same German officer we fought outside the Gestapo building last time you were in Paris. That bastard. So, I guess he's still alive after all. Don't worry, Leona. We're ready for him this time. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Well, well, well. It seems you're trapped like rats. How fitting. Now it's time you paid for the lives you took at Falaise. Hmm. I presume you had access to leaked intelligence and then followed the girl here, yes? You're clever. Not clever enough to avoid my trap, but clever for a human nonetheless. I'm so sorry, everyone. I must have led them right to you. This is all my fault. Don't blame yourself, Leona. You've been in worse before. Stay close to me and you'll be safe. Thank you, sir. I mean, uh, Jude. Oh, touchy. <laughs> Blood Clan soldiers tramples these rodents once and for all! Oh, my God. 
Humans and your pet dogs were lucky today. But remember, this isn't finished! You, you hear me? You're going to make it. I promise. Jude. Thank you, but it's all right. Listen, Colonel. I'm sorry. Leona, I'm 
sorry we failed you, Les. You didn't. Please, sir. Please, just... Uh, promise me you'll liberate Paris. That's all. We will. Now rest, child. Thank you, sir. Fiona! No! Open your eyes! Stay with me! Why? Why her? Uh, this can't be happening! She was only 17!
On August 23, 1944, after giving Leona a proper burial, the Wolf Pack continues on to Paris, ahead of the French 2nd Armored Division and the U.S. 4th Infantry. With the loss of their resistance liaison, the Wolf Pack members now find themselves uncertain of the conditions inside the city itself. But one thing is known for sure. The battle for Paris continues on in the city streets. Paris has become a fierce battleground between the German occupying forces and the French resistance movement. Listen up. We're approximately 10 kilometers from the center of Paris. It is imperative that we avoid confrontation with enemy patrols on our way to General von Holtitz. If we encounter an enemy unit we can't avoid, 
I expect them to be dealt with as discreetly as possible. That is all. I don't see any troops. Leona said the uprisings in the center of the city were fierce. The Germans must be concentrated there. Which means this is our chance to make a move on enemy headquarters. Team, we need to hurry and capture General von Holtitz before the city is destroyed. Not so fast, my friends. You vampires just don't know when to quit, do you? <laughs> this time, you will meet your end. And soon after, Paris will burn. The best part about slitting your throat will be not having to hear your bloody voice again, Chuck. Silence! Blood subjects! Teach these spine some respect! Crush them! Slaughter them! Fill the streets with their blood! Here they come. Focus your fire. We'll take them down one by one.
already. all mine. We're surrounded. This isn't looking good. Take out as many as you can. You blokes call for the cavalry. Lewis, cover their flanks. Right, sir.
I look forward to our next encounter, Fang Clan. Oh, 
Thank <laughs> you. 
They have become quite powerful. No one is unstoppable.
Sir, we just got word. The German troops in Paris are calling for a ceasefire. What? Quick! Get in radio contact with General de Gaulle and tell him Paris has not been burnt to the ground. Yes, Lieutenant Colonel. Sir, I have some urgent intelligence about the bomb. I informed Britain before coming here. What is it, Lewis? It seems the Krauts have made a successful atomic bomb, and they'll be deploying it, well, soon. Damn! Do you have the time and location of deployment? The enemy's artillery units are mobilizing. Right now the bomb's in Belgium, but they're planning on using it by early September. My guess is the target will be either London or Paris. The bomb's in Belgium? That's too far away for an artillery unit to fire at us. Are they planning on carrying the bomb into one of the cities and detonating it? Right, that's the thing, sir. They don't really need to. The enemy's finishing construction on a long-range missile that can carry the bomb. They're calling it the reprisal weapon. A missile, huh? I know the Germans have been working on liquid fuel rockets for a while, but we bombed their missile research station at Pianamunda last year. That should have halted their progress on such a weapon. Well, early production blueprints apparently survived, and they've been building them in a hidden mountain facility for months. The latest model is the V2 rocket. So then, the Germans actually have an atomic bomb small enough to fit on a rocket and launch directly at our cities from that far away? My sources say they're transporting the bomb to an artillery unit to strap it onto a V2 rocket. And after that? Well, yeah. It'll be ready for launch. 
If we let that bomb get to their artillery unit, London and Paris will be wiped out completely. We can't let them transfer that atomic bomb. I'll contact the Prime Minister for direct orders. In the meantime, be ready to move out at any moment. On August 25th, 1944, the Allied forces enter Paris under General Charles de Gaulle and the French Liberation Army, two days after the Wolf Pack sneak into the city. The leader of the German occupying forces, General Dietrich von Holtitz, surrenders. To Hitler's dismay, Holtitz disobeys the order to burn the city to the ground before the Allies can reclaim it. After four years of military occupation, Paris has been liberated. A warm welcome back, Lord Alexander. I trust your meeting went well. Hitler was unhappy with losing Paris. I do not think he realizes that it is only a matter of time before the Allies advance into Berlin. This war is proceeding faster than we expected. Our plans will be ruined if the Germans are defeated too soon. We must exterminate the Wolf Pack. What would you have me do? I have found a way to bring them down. They have a human with them. The blonde boy, my lord? But he's not Fang Clan, and he has no special powers. The human is their weakness. Those wolves won't turn their backs on a comrade. We can use him to bring down the rest of the pack. They're Loyalty will be their demise.
Although Paris has been liberated, the excitement does not last long for the Wolf Pack. Lewis's report on the German atomic weapons program casts a solemn shadow over the entire unit, and soon, urgent orders arrive from Britain to defuse the atomic bomb no matter the cost. The Wolf Pack mobilizes immediately. Allied intelligence reports that the bomb is being transported by train to an artillery unit near the front lines of Belgium, where an artillery unit is awaiting its arrival. Lewis's spy network is able to pinpoint the exact route the bomb will be traveling on, and the Wolf Pack immediately formulates a plan to intercept it. Upon receiving their orders, the unit rushes toward Belgium. Their target is a railway station hub to the east, where the train carrying the bomb will be stopping briefly. If they can arrive at the station before the train passes through, they stand a chance of stopping it from reaching its destination. Team, to get to the railway station, we need to pass through this town. It is still under German control, so I expect a few troops to be in the area. We're under pressure here, though. Time is running out and we need to defuse that bomb fast. Our priority is to pass through this town quickly and without incident. Whenever we're in a hurry, there's too many bloody crowds in our way! A few weeks ago, you were begging for more action. Now let's take these guys down fast. Roger that. Thank you. 
If it isn't the wolves. <laughs> you know what to do, Carmilla. I won't fail you, my lord. Destroy the enemy! Too many of them, sir. Everyone, get to the building on the west side. We'll hold a defensive position.
This isn't over yet. We got tanks. Oh, my God. 
now's my chance. Hold your fire! You might hit him. Can you feel it, little boy? Yes. That sweet sensation running through your body. Take your claws off him! Or I'll destroy you right here, you sheep. You are in no position to be making threats, my mangy friend. If you move any closer, I'll break this poor little boy's neck in half. Excellent work, Carmilla. Now, take the boy and get out of there. Yes, Lord Alexander. We have what we came for. Good day. I'm sure Jude's still... alive. He has to be. Don't worry. We'll find him. When Carmilla was leaving, she said they had what they came for. Which means they planned this. They chose him. They knew Jude didn't have any special powers and they targeted him. It's all my fault. What? You can't blame yourself for this. He saved my life in Africa. I should have been there for him today, and I wasn't.
Listen up, everyone. We're nearing the railway station. Intelligence tells us the freight train carrying the atomic bomb will make a brief stop there. Recent reports suggest we might find an infantry unit and maybe even heavy artillery positioned there. However, there has been no word of enemy vehicles at this time. Don't forget our objective here, team. If we encounter resistance at the railway station, we must push to the train and defuse that bomb at all costs. That's our train. Be careful now. Don't let them know we're here yet. So much for slipping in and out quietly. Infantry, artillery, a tank, and who knows what else they may have hidden. What do you think, sir? Getting close is going to be dangerous. It's too late to turn back now. We have a mission to accomplish, and the sooner we get it done, the better. Prepare for battle. Once we start moving, don't fall behind. Enemies approaching. We are under attack. Split into two groups. You lads destroy that tank before it starts moving while we head for the train. Roger that, sir.
We did it, sir. The train can't move now. It's not over yet! We still have enemy troops out there! Thank <laughs> you. 
The Tiger Twos were ready for battle. This isn't good. We need to take them down. Let's move. I'm with you. <laughs>
It wasn't easy, but we did it, team. I think that should eliminate any threat of an attack on our cities for the moment. Oh, I wouldn't begin the celebration just yet, dear. <sighs> you! I don't know what you did with Jude, but if you don't tell us right now, the last thing you see will be the battle of my gun. Jude, hmm? Is that the little boy's name? Well, don't worry about him. He's mine now. Besides, don't you have more pressing matters at hand? Such as preventing the catastrophe of an atomic bomb, perhaps? What are you talking about? The bomb was on that train and we stopped it. Your plans are ruined. Oh, one bomb was on that train, yes. But we have another. Really, I expected better from you Fang Clan peasants. We knew there'd be interference, so we sent two. One by train and one by transport. Ha <laughs> ha! You'll never find the other bomb. Only the driver of the vehicle knows the route. 
In fact, the bomb is on its way as we speak, right on schedule. And it should reach our artillery on the front lines in Belgium by the first week of September. Oh my, did I say too much? <laughs> if you want your friend back, we'll be waiting for you at the bomb's destination. Please, feel free to visit us if you're in the area. We won't fall for your tricks, demon. Well, I do hope you reconsider. For a little jewel's sake, that is. <laughs> Wait!
Thank you. 
Do you think the wolves will come, my lord? Oh, yes. They will come. They know there is a trap waiting for them. But that will not stop them. After all, even if they do not believe we have a second bomb, we still have their friend. You see, that is their greatest weakness. They hold on to even the faintest glimmer of hope for the chance to save a comrade. And so when they come, we will be ready for them. And they will walk right into their own demise. I shall certainly enjoy killing them. We won't just kill them, Carmen. We'll torture them. Their deaths will be cruel, painful, deserved. <laughs> We've learned that the 444th Artillery Company is the unit charged with strapping the bomb to the V-2 rocket and launching it. They're stationed at Barac de Frateur, near the front lines of the Belgian border. Our mission is to engage the enemy, destroy the warhead, and retreat. We know they're expecting us, so stay alert. And one more thing. The warhead is our top priority. But if we can rescue Jude as well, then I'd like it to be done with caution. I suspect they'll be using him as a shield, or as bait to draw us in. So let's try to avoid whatever trap they've set for us. That will be all. We leave in one hour. That's the warhead. Let's move. Here they come, just like the Sturmbannführer's head. Don't give them the advantage, lads. Stay alert.
Ah, the guests of honor have finally arrived. I almost thought you wouldn't show, but you're just in time to die. We're here for Jude and the Warhead, Blood Clan. We have you completely surrounded. You fools aren't in a position to make demands. There'll be no escape. I'm afraid you wolves don't stand a chance. But it would be rude of me not to let you see your precious friend. Jude, come! Impossible. This can't be happening. My Lord Alexander, I am at your command, Master. Jude, is that you? What? Why the hell are you in that uniform? Because that's his uniform now. Jude is proving to be one of my most loyal subjects. This time you've gone too far, you son of a bitch. Mark my words, monster. You will pay for all your sins. <laughs> Such language, Lieutenant Colonel. Rest assured, your threats mean nothing. I'll destroy you! Jude! Mate! No! Jude, it's me! Don't you remember me, mate? Who the hell are you? I don't know any limeys. I'm a proud German soldier, born and bred. It's no use. My new SS Untersturmführer has no memory of his past. He exists for the sole purpose of serving me. You're heartless. I'm going to kill you, bastard! <laughs> I'm impressed, my young pup. Such temper, such rage, such despair. Your raw emotions are just fuel for my appetite.
My turn, mate.
before they launch the rocket!
Let Jude go, you monster! I'm afraid that is not possible. I will be using my new ally as a personal bodyguard as I tour our new atomic warhead facility. Do not worry, though. We shall meet again. Kidding me.
Thank <laughs> you. 
My turn, mate.
forget this humiliation. In the name of the Third Reich, I will kill you all one day. I think Paris and London are safe for the time being. But they still have our man, sir. And it would seem they have the ability to further produce atomic weaponry. This is unsettling, to say the least. As we speak, SIS is gathering information on any new atomic bomb facilities in Germany. As for Jude, I'm afraid we may have lost him. He's under Alexander's control. Sir... What are you saying? I'm not giving up on him, lad. But there's a chance he might never recover. Normally, when a master is slain, his mind control spells will be broken. Killing Alexander should break the hold over Jude. But if not, I'm sorry. We may find ourselves with no other option but to eliminate him as well. No, sir. There's got to be a way. I'm sure the spell can be broken. Are you all right? You haven't been eating much since we got back from the front lines. Yeah, I'm fine. It's Jude, isn't it? <sighs> Look, if you need someone to talk to, I mean, it's better than keeping it all inside. Thanks, Cordelia, but I'm okay. I think I know what I have to do now. What do you mean? Just as the Lieutenant Colonel said, we might not be able to break the spell. And if that's the case, then I should be the one to kill him. What? It's my fault. Cordelia, who do you think talked him into enlisting in the first place? Besides, I think he'd want me to be the one to do it. Bye. 
After dismantling the armed V-2 rocket on the front lines of Belgium, the Wolf Pack returns to the new Allied Command Center in France to await their next mission. Meanwhile, the war effort proceeds smoothly. The Allies have now gained control of northern France and much of Belgium. It is decided they will invade Germany through the Netherlands. British Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery gets to work drawing up an ambitious two-part plan of attack, codenamed Operation Market Garden. The first part of his proposal consists of sending paratroopers into the Netherlands to secure vital bridges and roadways. The British First Airborne is assigned this dangerous task. Then, as the second crucial stage of Montgomery's plan, armored divisions will advance through the country to link up with the First Airborne. The Allies execute Montgomery's plan on September 17, 1944. The initial stages of Operation Market Garden are a success, as the British First Airborne Division begins securing the Val Bridge at Nijmegen. Within three days, they have captured the area and await the arrival of the armored divisions. However, German forces are quick to retaliate, and the Allied armored divisions meet strong opposition outside Nijmegen. With the land forces unable to reach their destination, the First Airborne soon finds itself cut off from all support and behind enemy lines. Montgomery's Operation Market Garden is not proceeding as anticipated. What did you find out? It doesn't look good, sir. We might be able to contain them until dawn at best. But as the sun comes up and they regain visual contact, I think we'll be overrun. They might even have an armored division here by then. That won't be enough time to finish the evacuation. We still have nearly 10,000 troops on this side of the river and many of them are wounded. We have to keep the enemy in check until our troops have reached the other bank. Agreed. Um, sir, I'd also like to talk to you about you-know-who. He hasn't been acting like himself lately. Yes, I've noticed. Ever since they took Jude, he's been distracted, which isn't good, Cordelia. It's affecting his performance during missions. Exactly. And I'm worried that if this continues, he's going to get himself killed out there on the front lines. I think the lad can handle himself better than you give him credit for, Cordelia. However, I'll keep an eye on him. The first airborne needs more time to get all their men across the river to safety. The Germans already have our location surrounded and we expect an armored division by morning. We're the last line of defense for our troops. This won't be easy, but we need to hold out as long as possible. Good luck out there. See anything? We're safe at the moment, but dawn's approaching fast. My guess is that they're preparing for a full assault as soon as the sun comes up. How's the evacuation going? They're trying their best to speed up the process, but it will still take some time. There are a lot of wounded men. Understood. Sir, can I ask you a question? What's on your mind, Corporal? How long have you and Lieutenant Miller been involved with the Special Forces? What was it like fighting the Blood Clan before all this?
Well, I suppose this is as good a time as any to talk about it. Keith and I enlisted not long before the First World War. Up until then, our clans mostly had small skirmishes. We fought frequently, but the combatants on both sides had always been few. These larger scale conflicts didn't begin until recently, actually, when humans started being dragged into the middle of it all. The Blood Clan's numbers in particular were declining rapidly. It would have only been a matter of time before they became extinct. But one day they began brainwashing humans. They set their sights on government officials and people in positions of power, and the human world slowly began moving off its natural course. By the time we realized what they were doing, the Blood Clan had mounted a surprise attack on our village. We sustained considerable losses, including my younger sister, Keith's mother. I didn't know his mother was your... Keith, his father Liam and I swore we'd take revenge on the Blood Clan and their leader, a man known as the Count. We alerted the British government of the Blood Clan's brainwashing techniques and enlisted in their special forces. They were wary of us at first, but when they saw what the vampires were capable of, they gave us their full support. We added Frank, Dr. Van Helsing, his student Jonathan Harker and a young Dr. Jekyll to the wolf pack and left for Transylvania. Fighting them on their own soil wasn't easy, but we eventually killed the Count and all of his subjects. Unfortunately, Keith's father Liam was taken. They brainwashed him and nothing we did could bring him back. Even after we killed the Count, Liam remained possessed he was a powerful adversary, ferocious and uncontrollable. He was completely out of his mind, and I... I had no choice. I had to... I had to kill him myself. It wasn't easy. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't mean to bring back those memories. It was 1885, almost 60 years ago. Killing a friend's not something you forget easily, lad. It's a pain you take with you everywhere you go, no matter what you do or where you run. It's not something you should torture yourself with. I've seen the look in your eyes. You plan on killing Jude yourself. Sir, how did you... <sighs> you forget that I've lived several lifetimes, and with age comes wisdom. Huh? They're here. Let's hold them off as long as we can. Yes, sir.
Allied Special Engineers crossed the Rhine on the night of September 24th to assist in the withdrawal of the surviving members of the British 1st Airborne. However, at dawn, German attacks resume and the rescue efforts are disrupted. Only 2,163 members of the 1st Airborne Division survive. The campaign in the Netherlands lasts only nine days, with a total loss of 17,000 Allied lives and another 6,000 captured. In addition, the failure of the operation results in the death of over 500 Dutch civilians. The German response to the invasion of the Netherlands is harsh. As they force all civilians around the city of Arnhem to evacuate their homes, an estimated 10,000 more civilian lives are lost to starvation and hypothermia.
With the failure of Operation Market Garden, the Allies find their forces on the front lines weakened and are forced to change tactics. Anticipating the Allies' vulnerability, the Germans plan a counteroffensive on the Western Front. Hitler gives the orders to attack through the forests of Ardennes and reclaim the Belgian cities of Brussels and Antwerp. Should his attack plan be successful, Hitler would divide the Allied forces in two, turning the war once again in Germany's favor. The counterattack is risky, but necessary for a German victory in Europe. The Germans prepare to launch Operation Wacht am Rhein in the final weeks of 1944. With so much at stake on the campaign's outcome, Hitler secretly relocates nearly 275,000 troops and 1,000 vehicles to the Western Front. This greatly weakens his defenses to the east on the Soviet front, but the opportunity to catch the British and American forces off guard is too tempting to resist. In the early morning of December 16, 1944, the first artillery shots of the battle are fired. The Allied forces soon find they are greatly outnumbered, with only 83,000 troops and just over 400 vehicles. With more than three times as many troops and twice as many vehicles, the Germans take advantage of their superior numbers and, thanks to the armored divisions, launch an effective assault. For Germany to stand any chance of winning this war, they must continue pushing over land at this rate. However, the Allied forces withstand the German attack at the key location of Bastogne in the Ardennes. As the U.S. 101st Airborne repels the counterattack, the Germans are forced to take a detour around the area, slowing their advance and creating a bulge along the front lines. The Battle of the Bulge will prove to be a decisive moment in the war. I have an important mission for you, Jude. I am at your command, my lord. I shall lead our forces to victory and crush the Allies. Well said, my boy. <laughs> you truly are the pride of the Third Reich. I am honored, my lord. Now, Jude, are you aware of our operations on the Western Front? Yes, I am. Our armored divisions have broken through the enemy's defenses and are nearing the Meuse River. If we continue the assault, victory will surely be ours. Correct. However, there is one hurdle in our path. A large American unit at Bastogne. They are proving to be a problem, and I want you to destroy them. As you command, my lord. Excellent. Carmilla will help you assemble your men, and I want you on the battlefield straight away. I will not disappoint you. Our next target is Bastogne, where the US 101st Airborne is holding off the German forces single-handedly. 
If the Germans continue advancing around them, the 101st Airborne risks being completely surrounded and cut off from the rest of the Allies. We have been given orders to join their unit and help defend this location. Due to poor visibility, though, we will not be able to use aircraft to reach our destination. As we move on foot to Baston, expect armored divisions and infantry. We deploy in one hour, so make sure you're prepared. Dismissed. We're approximately 300 meters from Bastogne, and no sign of enemy troops yet, sir. We should reach our destination in no time. The enemy must be concentrating their forces in another region. I sure hope so. Wait! Everyone halt! Enemy troops up ahead. We haven't been spotted yet, so wait until we get closer to begin firing.
unit's presence was not anticipated, but it is welcomed. Crush them in the name of Sturmbonfjör of Lado! That voice... Jude! Is that really him? Keep your mind on what you're doing, even if it is Jude. Is that understood, Corporal? It, yes, sir.
Jude, it's me. Don't you remember? Save your breath, boy. I've already told you. I don't know you! Damn it, Jude. If I have to kill every single Blood Clan savage to break that spell, then so be it. Oh! 
This one's all mine. <laughs>
say your prayers. <laughs> Again. You haven't defeated me, though. We'll still capture Bastogne. The German forces completely surround Bastogne and cut off the U.S. 101st Airborne from any hope of support. The unit soon finds that food and medical supplies are becoming scarce. Nevertheless, when the Germans give them the opportunity to surrender, General McAuliffe, commander of the U.S. 101st, refuses and vows to fight until the last man. By December 21st, 1944, the attacks on Bastogne have taken a heavy toll on both sides. With dwindling stores of ammunition, the men of the U.S. 101st are ordered only to fire on advancing Germans if there is a large concentration of them. Despite being surrounded, the 101st has managed to stand its ground.
The Battle of the Bulge continues, and by December 24, 1944, German forces have pushed past the area surrounding Bastogne, attempting to cut off the 101st Airborne from receiving aid. However, the Germans soon find that their own supply lines are stretched to the limit. As stores of fuel and ammunition dwindle, the German advance halts. Meanwhile, the rapidly improving weather conditions now opens the door for Allied Air Force bombing raids. It is becoming more and more apparent that Operation Wacht am Rhein is about to fail. On the evening of December 24th, General Hasso von Manteuffel, commander of the 5th Panzer Army, suggests the Germans abandon the counterattack operation and retreat. Adolf Hitler sternly rejects this proposal. Meanwhile, Eisenhower orders troops to reinforce Bastogne. The U.S. 3rd Army, led by General George S. Patton, is given the order to push toward Bastogne from the south and link up with the 101st Airborne. At the same time, the U.S. 1st Army advances from the west, and Montgomery's 21st Army advances from the north. The Wolf Pack joins General Patton's 3rd Army on the campaign through the front lines. We've deployed 25 divisions to the Western Front. And what have we accomplished, Carmilla? Nothing! We cannot even destroy that one worthless division in Bastogne. Please understand the circumstances, Herr General. Our supplies are running dangerously low. To advance further at this time would be dangerous. That is why we have dispatched units led by the Blood Clan to the Front. But even they are not showing the results I expect. The Fuhrer is incensed as well. I assure you, if you weren't one of his favorites, you would be in a concentration camp right now. Is that understood? Yes, Herr General. I cannot apologize enough. But I think I have a solution to our problems. I'm listening. I'd like to assemble a unit of Hellport soldiers for active combat. Impossible. That is a last resort only. They're authorized to defend Germany, not to be deployed on the front lines. Our assault on Bastogne has already come to a halt, sir. And Allied armored divisions are advancing as we speak. We don't stand a chance without the Hellport. With their advanced German technology, they could easily destroy the enemy's tanks. They're our best chance at slaughtering the Allies. If this operation is successful, they won't be able to recover. I assure you, Sturmbannführer Vlado shares this opinion as well. Please consider it. I will discuss the matter further with the Führer. Thank you, sir. I'm sure you'll do what's best for the Third Reich. <laughs> I have that fool right where I want him. Everything should proceed according to plan now. All right, lads, I'll brief you while we rest here. 
The US Third Army is sending us ahead to Bastogne to confirm the enemy's military strength and report back. General Patton isn't aware of this, but we are also here to gather intelligence on the Blood Clan and exterminate them if possible. As we saw from our previous encounter, the Germans are using Blood Clan units on the front lines. If our regular troops have to face them, the consequences could be dire. We must prevent that from happening, so be prepared for some difficult battles as we advance. Now get some rest. It's starting to snow. Bastogne's not far away, and there's still no sign of the enemy. There's such a large area to cover that I bet their units are spread out all over the region. We won't be able to predict their movements too easily. I wonder if Jude is with one of those units? He's probably with that bloody Alexander guy. It'd be nice if we could find that bastard out here and take care of him, huh? What are those up ahead? They look like machines. No. Wait, I think they're soldiers. What have we here? I thought I'd be testing my first platoon on a tank division, but it looks like much worthier opponents have limped on by. Destroy them! Headboard, first platoon, ready for combat. We don't know what these guys are capable of, so don't let your guard down. Have fun! Good thing we have our anti-tank gear. You know, I bet that armor has gaps at the joints. We should be able to fight them at close range, too.
Commencing operation. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Hell, there's more! Stay spread out or they'll slaughter us!
to hell!
Reinforcements. We're running out of ammo, sir. We're not going to last much longer. I think we got lucky today, lads. All right, let's finish off the rest of the enemy. Oh! 
You the British unit doing recon for us? <laughs> that was some fighting we saw today. I can't believe you downed that many. That could have gone very bad for us if you blokes hadn't shown up. Well, that's what you get for trying to take on all the crowds by yourselves. <laughs> 
Save some for us next time, all right? Will do, soldier. Thanks again. Sergeant Long, sir. General Patton sent me for your report on the area. Lieutenant Colonel Gallant, Special Forces. Tell General Patton Bastone is under his control and he can enter the city any time he likes. Roger that, sir. Thank you. 
the situation in southern Ardennes begins looking hopeless for the Germans. On the 26th of December, just past 1600 hours, the 37th Tank Battalion and the 4th Armored Division of the United States 3rd Army enter Bastogne from the south. Although General Patton's army is able to link up with the 101st Airborne Division, the German counterattack still remains strong in the north. The Battle of the Bulge is not yet over, but for the time being, Bastogne has been freed of the German stranglehold. After liberating Bastogne, General Patton gives the order for the 3rd Army to continue north in pursuit of the German 5th Armored Division. Meanwhile, the United States 1st Division pushes to the northwest of the Ardennes to track down smaller German units and help create a choke point. With the German counterattack now being steadily repelled, it is rapidly becoming apparent that the defeat of Germany is drawing nearer and nearer. Jude, I have another mission for you. Yes, my lord. The 5th Armored Division is currently in battle with the Allied forces, and we have a shortage of troops at the moment. I've sent Carmilla to Berlin to mobilize the Hellport soldiers. The Hellport are our most elite troops, with the durability of a tank and the response of a soldier. Unfortunately, they lack any real combat experience. Hellport... That means Hell's Gate. Indeed, my boy. Now I need you to lead a unit of Hellport, black magic troops, and blood subjects, and launch a surprise attack on our enemy's armored divisions. As you command, my lord. Fighting their tanks will be dangerous, but I am prepared to fight to the death for my country and my Fiora. <laughs> I expect no less from a proud German soldier. Carmilla should have a unit of Hellport ready for you. Now, get moving. Yes, my lord. Thank you. Everything seems to be going according to plan, sir. Between that little boy and the Hellport, I suspect the Fang Clan will have their hands full. Maybe if we're lucky, they'll all annihilate each other. That would take care of both problems at the same time. Did you hear him thank me for giving him this mission? It's a shame not all soldiers are as useful as he is. <laughs> I'm almost going to miss him! <laughs> I never imagined we'd encounter German troops like that. Right, and something tells me we'll be seeing more of them in the future. It's not just armor they're wearing either. According to our engineers, what's inside the armor isn't quite human. They're half man and half machine. Half man, half machine? It's like some bloody science fiction story. This ain't no story, though. What's inside that armor was once human. The Blood Clan have no respect for the dead. Our next assignment is another scouting mission, about five or ten kilometers to the north. We'll be moving ahead of the Americans again. Reports show the German 5th Armored Division is weaker than anticipated but they still pose a significant threat. We need to confirm these reports and assess their numbers, but be prepared for heavy combat out there, just in case. We leave in 15. That is all.
We haven't seen any enemy troops yet. Do you think they've pulled out of this area? You never know. They might be just around the next corner, waiting for us. All right, mate, that's not funny. What if they really are waiting to ambush us? Speak of the devil. I guess they were waiting for us after all. Spread out. Concentrate on them one at a time. Thank <laughs> you. 
again. I won't let you escape this time. Hellport, mobilize! Troops. There's so many this time. Stay sharp, everyone.
Convincing upper end. Yeah. 
No matter how many times we shoot them or cut them, they just keep coming. Uh, mechanism failing. Controls not functioning. Built this door from front lines. Huh? Something's wrong with that one.
Commencing Yeah. <laughs> 
Cursed humans again! You'll pay for the- We defeated them this time, but they'll be back, and in even larger numbers. And Jude is even more powerful than he was before. Sir, does this mean the spell over him is growing stronger? Perhaps. I'm afraid that if we want to have any chance of saving him, we need to kill Alexander as soon as possible. By January 13th, 1945, the German forces have completely withdrawn from the Bastogne region. Finally, on the 15th, the U.S. 1st and 3rd Armies link up in the center of the bulge at Halfalitza. 
The meeting of these two armies officially signals the end of the Battle of the Bulge. Meanwhile, British General Bernard Montgomery's divisions join them from the north. The Fuhrer's ambitious campaign has failed, and the Battle of the Bulge comes to a close. Each side's losses total nearly 100,000 men killed, captured, missing, or wounded. In addition, the Germans suffer the loss of most of their reserve armed forces and a large portion of their military vehicles. The Allies are now faced with an excellent opportunity to make their advance into the heart of Germany.
Not much changes on the front lines after early December 1944. However, during the next February, Allied forces finally begin to break through and create a 500 kilometer long front from the Netherlands to northeastern France. Initiated by Lieutenant General Alexander Patch and the 7th Army, Operation Undertone sees the Allied forces attempting to prepare for the assault into Berlin by securing the Alsace-Lorraine region. Operation Undertone is just one of many simultaneous attack plans drawn up by General Eisenhower near the end of the war. It is accompanied by Operations Veritable, Grenade, and Lumberjack. On February 8, 1945, Operation Veritable starts on the Northern Front with the British 30th Corps and the Canadian 1st Parachute Battalion invading Eastern Netherlands and moving to the Southeast. Upon reaching the Reichswald Forest, they come in contact with the German 1st Airborne. Meanwhile, as part of Operation Grenade, the U.S. 9th Army pushes upward from the south, attempting to trap the Germans. Not long after the other operations are underway, the U.S. 1st Army initiates Operation Lumberjack to break through the Siegfried Line and establish a strategic foothold along the Rhine. Jude, are you telling me a highly trained officer such as yourself lost a large portion of Hellport and got himself wounded in the process? My lord, please forgive me. I am willing to accept my punishment. Young boy, I want you to use this defeat. Learn from it. Discover a way to destroy the enemy without fail next time. The Wolf Pack is our country's greatest threat. Yes, my lord. Thank you for giving me another chance. I live to serve the Third Reich. I won't fail you again. Good. See that you don't. I'm placing one last unit under your command. This will be your last chance to destroy the enemy. Thank you, my lord. That little boy is not proving to be as effective as we'd hoped, my lord. No, he isn't. And the spell on him is growing weaker. Perhaps we ought to get rid of him before it's too late. I'm sending him to Reitzwald, and we'll see how he does. In the meantime, I need you to return to Berlin and attend to the final details of our plan. Yes, my lord. Everything is proceeding smoothly, and I received word a new bomb will be ready by March. Soon we shall rid the planet of this human infestation. Excellent! The Day of Resurrection draws near. Men, grab your gear and prepare for long-range heavy armor combat. We leave within the hour. I'll brief you along the way. What's going on, sir? It's the atomic bomb and the V-2 rocket. British intelligence has tracked down a new production facility. 
virtually unreachable by air. Do you think if we destroy this facility, that'll be the end of the threat? We can only hope so. The higher-ups wanted us specifically to handle this one. No bombing raids. They want positive confirmation that it's been destroyed. So where are we headed? A mountain range near Hanover. The surrounding forests are full of anti-aircraft batteries, so we'll be moving on foot. On foot, huh? We've been doing a lot of that lately. There's no time to complain. Pack your equipment and get ready to move out. We're advancing on Remagen with the US 9th Armored Division as they execute Operation Lumberjack. As you know, our mission is to destroy the Nazi research facility. No one is safe while they still have the V-2 rocket and the atomic bomb. The facility is located near Hanover. We will separate from the US 9th Armored and move towards our destination. Be ready to leave in 30 minutes. It's such a lovely, peaceful-looking area up here. You'd never know there was a war going on. It's so tranquil. Then you won't mind if I make this your final resting place. Jude! You have caused me enough humiliation already. This time I won't fail my mission. Jude, please, we're trying to help you. You have to fight this. Whatever they did to you, you have to fight it. I am Jude Lancelot, proud officer of the German army and loyal subject of the Fuhrer. I've had enough of your lies. Terminate them! Damn it! What if he never recovers?
Say goodnight. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
I'm prepared to face the consequences. I am empty-handed! I'll take that little witch to hell with me! Cordelia! Jude, please stop! Wake up! Don't you remember me, mate? What about Alicia? I'll just uh, give up to you! Uh, Die, you limey! What happened? Sir, he's been... Oh, no. Jude. Jude! No! Wake up! Jude, come on! You're gonna make it! Hey, guys. What's... happened to me? I just... I was just having the most terrible nightmare. I think the spell's broken. Uh, Jude, do you know who I am? How did I get here, mate? I feel so lightheaded. The last thing I remember is... Jude! Hold on! He needs help! It's no use. I'm a different blood type. 
But did we stop the bomb in time? I can't... I can't remember. The bomb's been taken care of. You know, you were a big help. Couldn't have done it without you. Oh, Jude, the bleeding won't stop. It's all right. I'm not gonna make it. Cordelia. You'd better take good care of my pal for me. Then, Lieutenant Colonel, thank you. Save your strength. This isn't over yet. Jude! <laughs> I think... I think it's over for me, mate. I'll say hi to Alicia and Leona for you. I'm so scared. I don't want to die. Not now. No! You can't die! Not when we've just gotten you back! Jude, no!
Sir, you have a minute. What's on your mind, lass? Ever since we buried Jude, the corporal's been acting... strange. Not sleeping much, talking to himself. He feels guilty. And angry. It's not something that will pass lightly, I'm afraid. I was hoping he'd be spared all this, but it was unavoidable. Is there anything we can do? I don't think so. I know what he's going through. There'll be many sleepless nights ahead for that lad. It's a tough road he's traveling. I could dismiss him from active duty for now, but that isn't what he needs either. He'd sure be a shame if he gets himself killed out there. Can't we bring someone in to back him up? I'll be keeping an eye on him out there. You have my word. Thank you, sir. Until the day comes when he can put all this behind him, he'll be needing our support. So let's make sure we give it to him, okay? It's gonna be rough for him. Yes, Lieutenant Colonel. Listen up. Before we can relax, I need to brief you on our route. We need to pass near Hereford to advance towards Hanover, so we'll flank the city. There will be enemy patrols, but don't waste ammunition on needless fights. If possible, let's avoid being spotted, understood? We leave in three hours. Until then, get some sleep.
getting cloudy out. The rain's not far off. There's a forest up ahead. We can take cover there for a while if we need to. We're under attack! You bloody fools! If you hadn't started this damn war, they'd still be here! Jude, Mum, Dad, Alicia, they'd all... Ah! I'll kill you all myself! No, stop! Someone grab him!
Commencing operation. Commencing operation. Yeah. 
Inside.
You're the last one. Go to hell! Die! Why won't you die, you bloody monster? Uh, uh, system failure occurring. Control unit malfunction. Huh? 
Where am I? How did I get down here? Something wrong. I don't feel cool. Sir, it's awake. How do you feel? Where am I? And who are you? British Special Forces. You're in the forest near Hereford, soldier. We have some questions to ask you. Who are you? Are you German? Are you... human? Human? What sort of question is that, you old fool? I'm all right, not much, Neumann. Parachute Regiment, Waffen SS. I have no clue why you'd think I'm not human. Humans don't dress or sound like that. You're nothing but a bloody machine. A machine that was made for killing people. What on earth are you talking about? Take a look at your bloody self. Tell me what you see when you look down at your body. This is... What's going on here? Even he doesn't know what's going on. They've erased his memory, no doubt. Max, your body has been fused to that armor. You're half machine now, I'm afraid. What? How is this possible? I remember I was in Berlin and there was an air raid overhead. That's the last thing you remember, eh? So, who did this to me? I think you died in Berlin, Max. My guess is the Nazis surgically joined your body to that suit of armor, and they used black magic to bring you back to life. You had a malfunction in battle just now. I think it somehow brought you back to consciousness. I don't believe you. The Germans could never create something so inhumane. I'm sure if I did die, I would have received a proper burial. You're lying to me. Max, how do you explain your body? How do you explain the German symbols emblazoned on your armor? How could this be true? I gave my life for the fatherland. I swore allegiance to those... to those monsters, and now I'm... You aren't the first we've seen, lad. Hitler has subjected many of your brothers to his sick experiments. He has hundreds of dead Germans in his army. No! Just kill me. Please. Let me join my family in heaven. You have a family? I had a wife and a three-year-old daughter. But they were both killed in an air raid. I'm so sorry. Don't waste your sympathies on this machine. They started the war. Do you know how many families you lot have destroyed already? This war is all your fault! Stop it! No, he's right. We believed in Hitler. We let this war happen, but we aren't all murderers. We have families, friends, people we care about. We're still human. Human? You aren't human, just a bloody fool! You were barely a human before they turned you into a monster! That's enough, Corporal. I apologize for his lack of respect, Oberleutnant. There's no need. So if you don't mind, I'd like a chance to mend the past. I'd like to kill the men who did this to me and my countrymen. But I need your help. Revenge is rarely an easy path. What sort of help are you asking for? I'd like to join your unit, sir. Once I've accomplished my mission, you can do whatever you like to me. There's nothing left for me in this life. Very well. But if you do anything suspicious, Max, if you do anything to make me doubt you for even a second, I won't hesitate to kill you. 
I understand. Thank you, sir. Sir, you can't let that thing join us. Shut it. I've heard more than enough from you already, Corporal, and this is not your decision to make. Yes, sir. That's the facility up ahead. There's anti-air artillery all along the perimeter, so it's a good thing we covered the distance on foot. 
What do you want to do, Jim? They have armored vehicles and infantry. And as we get closer to the facility, there's no natural cover to hide behind. We'll attack at nightfall. Until then, I suggest we hide here in the forest. We'll take turns standing watch in two-hour shifts. Roger. It looks like the bomb's already been attached to the V-2 rocket, so we need to act fast. We'll split into two groups for this. My unit will handle the watchtower on the right and then take care of the vehicles to prevent the enemy from escaping. Meanwhile, the other unit will take out the left tower and then destroy that warhead. Now it's imperative that we attack both watchtowers simultaneously. We have no report on the enemy's numbers within the facility itself, so be safe out there. We move in one hour. You four take the left. Cordelia, you're in charge. Everyone else, you're with me. We're gonna knock out the tower on the right and avoid those searchlights.
Damn, they know we're here. Hold your positions. What's the cause of this commotion? Guards, don't let him near the V2. That's our last atomic bomb. Protect it with your lives! We can't let them launch it. Cordelia, hurry! Take out that rocket! You! That's impossible! You died at the North Pole! Huh? What's wrong, Major? He's... I, I think that guy's my father. Th that's impossible. He died in 1776. What? Supposed to be... What's that monster my ancestors created? Ancestors? Who are you? Are you related to Victor Frankenstein? I'm his great-great-great-grandson, William Frankenstein III, and you're the reason for my family's suffering! Gods! Show them no mercy! Thank you. 
Yeah. 
Family's last chance at redemption by V2 Rocket. I don't believe this when thanks to you it's all gone. Damn you, monster! You have brought nothing but ruin to my ancestors! And now you have done the same to me! Enough! Shut your mouth, you fool! First your ancestor tries playing God himself and makes a monster like me. Now you try to produce the atomic bomb. Professor, is that all your family knows how to do? You could use your talents for something good, and yet, you just cause suffering. You can't talk to me like that, you worthless robot. If anyone knows anything about suffering and death, it's you. You killed the professor and ruined my family's reputation. I'm lucky to even have a job after what you did to us! I know what I've done. It was unforgivable and I've spent decades trying to atone for it. Yes, it's true, Professor. I killed innocent humans. Killed what should have been my family. But your ancestor, he's the one who made me who I am. How can you and your whole damn family be so blind? You make one deadly creation after another. But bloodshed only leads to more bloodshed. It's a vicious, endless cycle, and everyone suffers. I killed him to stop that cycle from repeating, and I repented for what I did. So self-righteous. You can't repent for your sins, you're not even human! You lecture me on bloodshed. You're a murderer, that's all you are! A mindless killer! If that's the way you see it, then I can't change your mind. But I don't slaughter innocent humans for a living like you do, Professor. I kill Nazis so we can end this war. Professor, the atomic V2 rocket has already been eliminated. And soon this facility will be destroyed. However, you're still considered a threat and we can't allow you to leave. I'm asking you to cooperate with us and no harm shall come to you or your men. Do whatever you want. When Hitler finds out about this, he will hold me responsible. I am already dead.
Operation Undertone ends on March 21st, 1945, and the Allies are now in position to begin the push into German soil. While withdrawing, the German troops try to destroy all of the bridges, but they are unable to destroy the Ludendorff Bridge in time. Under the cover of an aerial assault, the Allies begin crossing the Rhine. The first wave of troops successfully deploys and begins securing bridgeheads. By March 25th, Allied engineers managed to construct 62 additional bridges. By the end of the month, over 20 Allied divisions and 1,000 vehicles cross the river, led by General Bernard Montgomery. Their next target is the Ruhr Valley, an area that is crucial to the German supply lines and manufacturing. Germany's defeat appears to be inevitable. During this time, after destroying the last of the V-2 rocket production facilities, the Wolfpack heads to Bonn and joins the Allied forces on the front lines. Is everything ready, Carmilla? It is finally time to implement our plan. The necessary preparations have been made, my lord. And I have informed Hitler that it is possible to summon the Legion. Excellent. I'm surprised, to be honest. Thanks to these Germans, 
We actually managed to acquire enough human souls without the use of those atomic bombs. If everything continues as planned, he'll summon the Legion and we'll be able to collect the remaining souls we need during the devastation. <laughs> the Count will be reborn very soon. All thanks to you, my lord. Sorry, I didn't see you there. Here, let me help you up. Watch where you're going, mister! I didn't mean to bump into you. Are you alright? Yeah, I think so. But I'd feel better if you gave me some chocolate. I can't believe I'm falling for this. Alright, here you go. That's all the chocolate I have. Oh, thank you. Yum, yum! Hey... Are you American or British? British. You're here to end the war, right? Uh, yeah. That's what we're here for. Hooray! That means Papa will be home soon. How's that? Is your dad a soldier? No, he's a baker. Papa's the best in the whole city. But they made him join the army. Where is he now? I don't know. He sent us a letter last week. Mum said he's in Poland, but he'll be back as soon as the war's over. Our neighbor told us the war will end when the Brits and the Americans come. So if you're here, that means the war's over, right? Soon, I hope. <sighs> there you are. We have a big problem. What happened? An American unit near Brussels was just attacked by some blood subjects. What? The Lieutenant Colonel received emergency orders. We need to head there straight away. Let's hurry then. Hey lad, I hope your dad comes home soon. Take good care of your mum, alright? I sure will. Thanks for the chocolate! Cordelia, do you remember when you tried to tell me there were nice Germans out there? How could I forget? It was like talking to a stone wall. Now that we're here, I think I understand what you were trying to tell me. Jude and I enlisted to put an end to this war. But after he died, I was only fighting for revenge. And that's not right. Revenge doesn't end wars. It only starts new ones. I was acting like a fool, and I just wanted to thank you for helping me realize it. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Well, we should get going. The Lieutenant Colonel's waiting for us. You're right. Let's go. We're heading to a mobile outpost near Brussels where the Americans were attacked by the Blood Clan this morning. We have an armoured unit fighting back, but it's not going well. There are reports of a large creature wreaking havoc on the battlefield. Bring your most powerful weapons and all the ammo you can carry. The end of the war is in sight and we can't let them succeed in their counter-attack. Move out.
Are you fellas seeing what I'm seeing? That's a dragon, lads. It's been years since I've seen one. Hitler and the Blood Clan must be getting desperate. The dogs have finally arrived. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this will be the last time you interfere with our plans. Legion, kill them once and for all.
Oh, my God. 
Surrender! I can't believe you defeated the Legion. But don't worry. Hitler will still summon more. Your armies will soon be overrun with the dead. And once Lord Alexander's plans have come to fruition, the entire human race will be only a memory. Plans? What plans? Tell us! I don't think so. <laughs> I'll be seeing you all in hell soon enough! <laughs>
Enforcement, sir! Pick them off one at a time!
It looks like we might not have much to celebrate. If she was telling the truth, we might have some difficult fights ahead. She called that unit the Legion. 
If they can still raise that many soldiers, the Allied forces don't stand much of a chance. And I wonder what Alexander's planning. It sounds like the Blood Clan have something dangerous up their sleeve. I think our path is clear. We can't take a defensive stance any longer. We must be the ones to make the first move. It's time for us to go to Berlin. You think we're all hoping you'd say that?
In April of 1945, the Allied forces along the Western Front begin assaulting Germany's vital manufacturing facilities in the Ruhr Valley. This halts most of Germany's production capability. Meanwhile, Soviet forces advance on the Eastern Front and relentlessly push toward Berlin. They manage to quickly regain land lost earlier in the war, and by April 15th, they create a 200-kilometer-long front just outside the city. The Soviets are poised to invade the capital. Using the Soviet attack as a diversion, the Wolfpack soldiers are able to enter Berlin by air, undetected, and they can now begin their most dangerous mission, the assassination of Hitler and his top officials. The date is now April 29, 1945, and the final battle against the Nazis will soon begin. You'll be in Berlin soon. I have to admit, I'm getting a little nervous. Yeah, me too. But I think it's alright to be nervous. We're landing in the middle of enemy territory, after all. I guess you're right. So, what are you going to do after the war's over? Hmm. You know what? I don't think I've ever given it much thought. I've been so focused on just winning the war that I never imagined what it'd be like after. I guess I'll go back to London and see about school. My mum and dad have been putting me through university. Always wanted me to finish. What about you? I don't know. Don't really have a home anymore. And no family. That's nonsense. Of course you've got a family. What do you think we are? Right, Lieutenant Colonel? Right. We're a team, lass, and we'll always be there for each other. Just because the war ends, it doesn't change anything. Thank you, sir. Hey, you should move to London. I can show you around. Take you on a boat tour, watch the sunset on the Thames, visit Kensington Gardens. We can even catch a musical in the West End. That sounds fun. I think I'd like that. Yeah, it sounds like the kid just got himself a date. <laughs> what? No, wait, I don't... Uh, I mean... Haha, <laughs> <laughs> hey, just make sure you send me a wedding invite. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen up. We're headed to Berlin in a seized cargo plane. The Allies should have gained control of the skies by the time we get there, so we'll use the confusion to parachute in. The drop point is nearly four kilometers north of the city center. Even though Soviet troops are currently invading, we should still see German units in the urban areas. Once we regroup on the ground, we'll begin our advance towards the Führer's bunker. Speed is our top priority right now. No stragglers, understood?
Is everyone ready to move out? Wait, sir. Do you hear that? Tanks! Take cover before we get killed! I want everyone to advance slowly on their flanks and surround them. And don't do anything stupid out there.
reinforcements. Don't fight them at all.
Is everyone all right? Let's keep moving before we get surrounded by the patrols. Hold. There's enemy troops and vehicles up ahead. Sir, look. It's Heinrich Himmler. 
What's he doing in the middle of the city? Can anyone hear what he's saying? I've tried negotiating peace with the US and Britain, but they did not accept our terms. Germany is finished, men, and this will be our last chance to flee. Change out of your uniforms and into civilian clothes. We'll meet at the rendezvous point in one hour and leave for South America by U-boat. If you're late, we'll leave you behind. Yes, sir. The General is planning to flee the country? Such cowardice. We don't have a lot of time, but we can't let him escape. Let's make this fast. Move out! Enemy troops, return fire!
don't know who you are, but I admire your courage. In fact, I'll show you how much respect I have for you by killing you myself. You're no ordinary human, huh? Very perceptive of you. Thanks to the Führer and the Holy Spear, I now possess insurmountable power. You are no match for me. The Holy Spear? Sir, what's he talking about? The Lance of Longinus, a very old relic. Legend has it the spear grants immense power to whoever wields it. Now it all makes sense. What do you mean, sir? It's no wonder how a common man such as Adolf Hitler managed to rise to power. The spear must have helped him sway the minds of the people. <laughs> Indeed. Since he founded in 1932, the Führer has been truly unstoppable. And unfortunately for you, it enables him to grant his most loyal officers abilities beyond your darkest imaginations. Can you see then why he has even those vampire savages eating out of his hands? The Führer is restoring our great country to the mighty power it once was. So that's why the Blood Clan is following orders from Hitler. He must have enlisted their help. With all this big talk, I'm surprised you're abandoning your country, General. If Hitler really is unstoppable, why are you running away like a card? I think I have suffered enough of your insults for one day. Kill them!
Thank <laughs> you. 
Please don't kill me. I'm begging you. You lived your whole life a disgrace. At least die with honor. Stop. He's no threat to anyone right now. When the Allies come through here, he'll be captured and charged for his crimes. But what if he escapes, sir? He'll kill more people if we let him live. I don't think so. When Hitler hears he was trying to flee, the Germans will be looking for him. There are penalties for desertion, I hear. No, with both sides out to get him, I don't think he'll be a threat to anyone anymore. What about his magic, sir? I already have a solution for that. Hey, what are you doing? How dare you? What is this thing? It's a restraining belt we created long ago. If it detects magic being used, it will sever your body in half. It will do the same if you ever try to remove it. What? No! It's good. It's just an ordinary human now. Either side should have no trouble capturing him. Part of me hopes the Germans find him first, though. We should keep moving. Auf Wiedersehen, Herr General. Wait! You can't leave me like this! That's the Brandenburg Gate ahead, which means Hitler's bunker is close. We'll have to find an entrance that isn't so heavily guarded, though. What are we going to do if he's not there, sir? Don't worry, he'll be there. Our reports say he hasn't left Berlin yet. So this is it then, huh? What we are about to accomplish here today will put an end to this bloody war once and for all. So far, so good. That must be Hitler's bunker up ahead. Do you think we could make it inside without being seen? It's possible, but don't let your guard down. We don't know how many men Hitler has in there. Hold up, both of you. It looks like someone's coming out. Stop right there! Keep your weapons aimed on Hitler, lads. And be prepared to fire if he makes any sudden movements. Well, going for a midnight stroll, Führer? It's a beautiful evening, isn't it? What's this? Who are you? Lieutenant Colonel James Gallant. Lead commander of the Wolfpack, British Army. Special Forces, Covert Ops. British. Men, draw your guns! Kill those pests! Wait. I've heard of your unit. Yours are Fang Clan soldiers. Hm. Herr Alexander warned me about you. That's correct. I assume that is Oberfuhrer Oskar Derlewanger on your right. And on your left is SS Obergruppenführer Heinrich Müller, head of Gestapo. How dare you! 
A soldier of your rank has no right to address us as an equal. You British should really learn some manners. Hmm. There's something strange in the night air. Can you smell it? What's this? The air reeks of rot. It's as if something's decaying on the inside. Corrupt and evil. It's coming from you lot. You maggot! Prepare to die! Hold on, Oscar. Lieutenant Colonel, I have a proposition for you. Your powers clearly exceed Alexander's, and I admit, I'm impressed by your boldness. It's a good quality in a soldier. How would you and your men like to join forces with us? How would you like to be on the winning side? Even though none of you are of pure Aryan descent, you have all fought quite well. I think it's clear Germany will soon fall to the Allied forces' superior numbers. However, you, of all people, should realize that as long as I possess the Holy Spear, the Third Reich will never truly die. We shall rise again from the ashes! If you agree to join me, I'll grant you a substantially higher rank and unlimited legions at your disposal. So... I am quite certain that is more than the British have offered you, hmm? Just shut your mouth! Do you know how many people you've killed? How many lives you've ruined? You Nazis don't know when to quit! You're a monster and a murderer. Führer, I think you've underestimated me and my men. We'll not be swayed by your offers. We are here to end the bloodshed, not create more of it. Your cowardly reign ends here tonight! It's a shame, really. Such talent wasted on your spineless cravens. You could have had the entire world at your feet. You could have been revered forever. But now, you shall die. That pile of bones won't keep us from victory. Spread out, lads. Don't give them any advantages.
Please allow me to escape. I won't die to these curse.
I think you've defeated me!
Even stronger than I imagined. But you fools haven't accomplished anything. The German race won't be defeated. My legions will tear you apart and enslave the world! Come, my servants! Destroy these bombs! Another dragon! This one looks stronger than the red one we fought earlier. <laughs> you don't stand a chance against my armies with your inadequate powers and those pitiful weapons! 
But unlike your men, we won't run away. We'll fight to the very end. Thank you. 
How could I be defeated? This is possible. The Third Reich and its reign of terror have come to an end. I suggest you atone for your sins on your way to hell. Do not think that this will end with me. Men are stupid. And until the day comes when all the inferior races are purged from the Earth, there will always be war! And I'll be watching from the depths of hell! Even in death, my legacy will live on! <laughs> Thank you. 
Is it over? Not yet. We need to track down those officers who escaped, and we need to finish off Alexander. It'll never be over while they're still alive. I agree, sir. So what's our next move? It's too dangerous to remain in Berlin much longer. We'll leave the city and head west. Okay, let's move out. On May 2nd, 1945, the burnt corpses of what appeared to be Adolf Hitler and his mistress, Eva Braun, are found by Soviet forces in the Fuhrer's underground bunker. Theories surface that the corpses might be body doubles, but an investigation by the Soviets concludes that one of the corpses is in fact Hitler's. However, no concrete evidence is produced to either confirm or deny the authenticity of this claim and the details of the Wolfpack's involvement with Hitler's death is never officially documented.
On May 7, 1945, the newly appointed president of Germany, Karl Dönitz, sends General Alfred Jodl to France as his representative. As instructed, Jodl promptly signs the instrument of unconditional surrender, calling for all German soldiers to cease active operations. A similar treaty is signed in Britain, and after six long years, the war in Europe has officially ended. However, a few German officers managed to escape capture, including Alexander Vlado, whose plan still remains a mystery. The Wolf Pack is charged with the orders to track down any German official who might still remain a threat to the Allied countries. I can't believe the war's finally over. It hasn't really sunk in yet. Yeah. After all this time, it's going to be strange starting a new life again. Especially with Jude gone. I know it's hard. We all miss him, too. There you two are. Get back to base and prepare for the next mission. What's happened? We just got word on Mueller and Durlevanger. We're going to capture them before they can leave the country. Roger that. We all here now? Good. As you know, a lot of the German high command has tried to escape capture by the Allies. We need to assist in hunting some of them down. An informant has supplied us with the whereabouts of Müller and Derlewanger, who I'm sure you remember from Hitler's bunker. They are headed for the coastal town of Wismar, where they plan to escape to South America. These men are very dangerous, and they need to be held accountable for their crimes. We cannot allow them to escape. We will deploy for Wismar and attempt to meet them on the road leading into town. I suspect they'll be traveling with a relatively small escort, but let me remind you that they are very powerful. So bring extra ammo, lads. Dismissed. Wait until they're within range before you fire. Roger, sir. Get them!
has no escape! Oh, my God. 
Turn, mate. Oh, <laughs> 
Sorry, we failed to, my Führer. We tried to keep Third Reich alive. Farewell, my darling wife. How pathetic. I was trying to relocate them to keep the spirit of the Third Reich alive, but they couldn't even escape without being killed. <laughs> Somehow, I'm not surprised you wolves are to blame. But this is the last time you'll interfere with my plans. So you are still alive? You and I have a score to settle, demon! Oh my. The war's over, and you're still crying about your precious little friend, eh? <laughs> you humans are so amusing. Enough! You're just as responsible for the war as those two men on the ground there. Millions of people have died because of you, and you will be held accountable. Held accountable? 
<laughs> Sorry, girl, but I don't answer to humans. Besides, I didn't start the war. <laughs> I merely assisted. Assisted? You were weak and hungry for power, so you succumbed to Hitler and the spear. You were nothing but a madman's servant. Now you're just trying to make me angry, old man. But alas, you're mistaken. We were never his lackeys. We had other reasons for helping the Nazis. Yeah, we heard. I don't know what you were plotting. But with the war over, it seems your plan has failed. Oh no, you're quite wrong. In fact, it's in the final stages. We only need to gather a few more souls. I'm thinking yours will do nicely. What could you possibly need millions and millions of souls for? Wait, you don't mean... <laughs> That's right. Very shortly I'll be resurrecting our founding father. I believe you're already acquainted with him. Count Dracula. He burned his body. There's no way you could resurrect him. And now you know why I've been calling you Fang Clan a bunch of fools. <laughs> we only need a single body part to resurrect our master. A tiny speck of dust even. I stole his ashes from Transylvania decades ago. Wow. You dim-witted wolves were busy congratulating yourselves. And soon, he will rise again. Damn it. I should have known. I was so careless. <laughs> yes, you were. And I thank you for it. And now, once we finish you off, there will be no one left to stand in our way. This world will be ours, and darkness will rule! And yet you lot couldn't even win this war. What makes you think you'll be able to conquer the whole world? This is just one of many wars. The Third Reich may have lost, but there will always be bloodshed. As long as humankind continues to fight one another, you wretches will be playing right into our hands. We'll feed off the stupidity of men. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think the human race thirsts for blood more than us vampires do. Besides, this war was merely an experiment, and we've learned a lot from it. No. I think enslaving humanity will be all too easy next time. Right. You've a strange outlook on life if you think killing millions of people is an experiment, mate. Don't those lives mean anything to you? Ha! <laughs> would it disappoint you if I said no? Human lives are so short. Does it really matter if they die a few years early? <laughs> They're cattle. That immortality of yours has left you daft. When life comes and goes like the wind, you relish every ruddy minute of it. It's the very thing what gives us respect for life and makes our accomplishments all the more astonishing. What accomplishments? All I see is anger and fighting. Oh, they try to fit as much depravity as they can into their short lifespans. They're a useless race. 
It's clear we'll never talk you out of your delusions, and there can be no peace between our clans until one destroys the other. Unless you're afraid, I think today's as good a day as any to settle this. So stubborn and self-righteous, ha! Looks like it's time to teach an old dog some new tricks. Like how to play dead. Come, my servants, let us end this! This is it! Good luck, everyone!
Lost monster, prepare to join your master in hell! <coughs> this is impossible. I will not be defeated by these insolent dogs. It's over. You're outmatched. I will have my retribution, no matter the cost. Infinite gods of the dark, I offer up my own soul if you grant my wish. Reshape the bodies of me and my legion and destroy my enemies!
What's that giant bugger? Bloody hell! <laughs> Life's never dull when I'm with the unit. One thing after another. You just don't get this kind of excitement at the university. All right, lads. This is the moment of truth. Let's work together, and don't any of you dare get killed. Yes, sir.
After all that, I think now we can finally say the war is over. Yes, but we paid a high price to get here. <sighs> Leona, Jude, we've lost some good friends. Right you are. And hopefully they can rest better, knowing we've made the world a safer place. I think that we've avenged their deaths. But even though the war's ended, the world isn't safe. We'll never be safe until all of the Blood Clan are eliminated. So then you think there are more out there, attempting to resurrect the Count? That's right. And as long as there's a chance he can be brought back, 
We can't allow so much as a single blood clan footprint to remain. They must be purged completely, down to the slightest little speck of dust. So, I presume I'm not returning to the university? We can't walk away now. The blood clan, us, we all have an important job to do. Looks like that tour of London might have to wait a little bit. I'm sorry, Cordelia. Hold on. You don't need to rearrange all your lives. I can hunt the Blood Clan down on my own. What? Sir, what are you saying? I'm the one responsible for getting each of you involved in this, and I... I'm the one to blame. For the deaths of our comrades. The war's over now. You've all accomplished what you set out to do. Return to your normal lives. They're my burden to bear. Discharging us. Hey, my love. I'm afraid they won't blow over none too well. I think we like it here. I don't want to leave the unit either. I understand what you're saying. But I'm staying till it's over. I'm with them. How could you think we'd want to leave? Weren't you the one who was just telling me we're one big family? <laughs> you got me there, lass. Well, I can't get rid of you lot. You sure you want this? Yes. We'll stick together until the very end. Because that's just what family does. What's wrong, sir? Your eyes look a little bit red. Are you all right, sir? No, no, it's nothing. I guess the wind must have blown some dust in my eyes. <laughs> okay, sir, we'll just leave it at that then. Well, what's our next move? Shall we head home? But, where's home? Home is... Wherever we're all together.